What's up?
books fell over. <sighs> so did everybody have a good weekend? Um, uh, my neuropathy is about middling. Gross. <laughs> What's a weekend? Uh, Fucking wither. I haven't been to the post office in fucking ages. I'm sorry. Why is this? I'll fucking drag my ass over there. It's it's that direction, and everything I do is that direction. Um, I, I haven't forgotten. It is actually packaged up. I just haven't put it in the mail. Ugh. Uh, hey, Moomin. I, uh, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, well, I, you know, I've got some plans for today. Um, we're probably going to go through the history of May Day. I've never done a May Day episode, and we were off, like, when May Day actually occurred this year. Like, we, I wasn't streaming that day. Um, so we're going to do the history of May Day, because... If you don't know the history of May Day, then you don't understand why I'm saying Labor Day is a sham. Labor Day is bullshit. Um, so. Jesus, Wither. Well, I'm only, I only account for one of those. Uh, yeah, and I was talking to somebody yesterday, and they, they had no idea what May Day even was. I was like, holy shit, man. Like, how do you know not know about May Day? <sighs> so, yeah, we're going to go through the history of May Day. And I'll contextualize it against um, Labor Day. And we'll uh, we'll get a little history lesson in. Because um, apparently people need it. And I've yet to do it on Twitch. So, um. There is the old, it's episode 53 of Proudly Radicals podcast. Um, if you want to actually go hear the original May Day episode. Um, but here, yeah. If you get the chance, get to London for May Day sometime. I mean, anywhere else in the world, really, moving for May Day. Like, literally anywhere. I mean, outside of fucking China and Africa, but, <clears throat> you know. Ah. Oh, um. Mine? Uh, skeptic? Or somebody else's? Um. <laughs> yeah. Cool. The origins of and problems with uh, policing. Yeah. Good on you. No, oh, what's this? Hang on. Uh. Cool. So, this was fun. Before we get into all that stuff, right? You know, typical warm-up. Oh, wrong one. So, yeah, fucking rough, right, Wither? Um, you should you should go back to. Um, <sighs> it didn't, um, brother. It it didn't. Um, Antifa was already involved. What you would identify as Antifa or Black Block. Um, because most people conflate Antifa with Black Block in this country, at least. Um, most people can't tell the difference. Um, I find, at least. Um, and as an Occupy organizer and an anarchist and former Black Block and a generalized member of Antifa, um then uh, I can sort of speak on this topic. Um, so Antifa has been a thing and been active as an idea since World War II. It has been. It continues to be. 
but it is a non-formalized set of ideals. Black Block is a set of tactics. Occupy was a movement. So, there's your distinctions. Um, I don't know who Genitals is. Um, hang on. The Genitals incident. Or at least contextually, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know who the fuck that is. <sighs> uh, yeah, and Wither, if you want to go back, go back to the fucking first episode. I don't know. Go back to the first episode of Proudly Radical. Go back to the first episode of Misery Likes Company. That'll give you a fucking insight. Um... Sounds about right. Truth way. Sounds about right. Yeah, Occupy wasn't exclusively the province uh, providence of uh, a province of anarchists. While we were Black Bloc was a dr uh, driving force, and anarchistic techniques were used for organizing and consensus decision making in many of the encampments. Occupy cannot be claimed as an anarchist movement. That would be an overreach on our part, and I say that both as an Occupy organizer and an anarchist. Um. Jenna Tolls. There. I had, look, we, I had a direction and things I was going to do today. While I appreciate community involvement and the interaction back and forth, Truthway, um, just not really on the agenda today. So it sucks that somebody was murdered by a cop, but it happens every <clears throat> now, now sort of situation. So keeping up with the cycle is you know not something i can maintain so anyway doing community warm-up as i was doing before i took the first fucking exit off the freeway um how was occupy for you guy um miserable it's fucking miserable um it wasn't great um It showed me the power of the neoliberal system and how it can co-opt a movement so effectively. Um, it taught me a great many lessons. Um, yeah, that's that's sort of how I feel about Occupy encapsulated. Is It was a very good teaching moment for me. Um, Viva, th <laughs> Viva, thank you for the follow. Uh, follow for the resub, Viva. Jesus Christ, I like Viva's following. Um, oh, Bezos Bucks too. Prime, uh, Prime sub. You, you, you don't evil. Really, every single human being has the capacity for demonic and angelic contained within them. The greatest horrors and the highest altruism, all contained within ourselves. Every last one of us. Don't ascribe external externa uh, externalities such as evil to things like Democrats and Republicans. It's a goofy idea, and it leads you down some pretty nasty rabbit holes. Hey, nonsense. Broke my hand of breaking up a fight and taught me how greedy people can be in this system. Not great. Met some fun people, though. Yeah, um, taught me some organizing techniques. Taught me some tactics. Um, but mostly it taught me how easily a, uh, a, uh, a movement can be co-opted. I give you all my evil Bezos bucks. Thank you, Viva. Um, so, one of my dating sites, right, dating, um, <sighs> yesterday, somebody fucking contacts me through. We'll get to that. Um, 
So this guy sends me a message saying, uh, what, what's your name? Let me know if I can help in any way, both financial and morally. Okay. I'm like, all right, this is weird. But he's also an old dude. Um, and so I'm like, all right, you know, maybe he's just an old dude who's lonely, right? Um, and I'm, you know, like, all right, you know, hope you're as well as you can be, blah, 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 blah. Um, told me his name. He said, what would make me happy is to find a person who values me and can understand some of my problems, such as anxiety and autosclerosis, which is gradually going deaf. Okay. So you, I said, you know, well, it's lovely to meet you. And yeah, that's quite a combination of fuck me. Huh. Um, One thing I'd like to seek uh, seek from you is honesty. I want us to be honest to each other in everything we do. Of course, you would agree with me that honesty uh, is the key to a good and lasting relationship. Without truth, we cannot move forward. All right, already, I'm pe I'm like, this is this is for dick, right? This ain't grinder, but this is for dick, straight up. Like, this is. I'm sorry, what? Right. I'm like, I, well, first thing is there's yet to be a we in this situation, <clears throat> but I can certainly agree that that's important. Um, so forgive me any hesitancy I may have revealing in such uh, anything up front uh, to someone I don't know, but I'm always to meet, uh, open to meeting new people and having a good conversation. So that's a lovely foundation. Um, <sighs> Oh, well, I can give 600 a week just to be my online buddy and have someone to talk to at all times. Also, I'm really into body contact, making out, kissing, and sex play. I've never bottomed, only topped, but I do love to suck cock and sure wouldn't mind meeting and doing all of these things on a regular basis. <clears throat> but wait. But wait, there's more. So, Spidey senses. Remember what? Remember what Kai? Um, remember what Kai used to do? All right. Remember Kai's former life. Spidey senses were tingling. <clears throat> well, for now, I'm not exactly traveling much between COVID and my own bullshit. I think you'd understand that. I mean, that's insanely generous of you. At all times is a bit vague, uh, as I do have uh, previous engagements in my life that require my full attention. Um, I said, so, you know, I laid out some hours, basically, and I said, but beyond that, I'm kind of open. How <clears throat> under the table could we make this money? Homie gonna roll the way homie rolls, right? I'll try to be more specific. First, no one is perfect, especially me. I know this though. When the right person or person that uh, when the right person or person that seems right comes into your life, you will know it. We can uh, we can usually uh, meet twice in a month. What do you think about this arrangement? He ain't in Vegas. Uh, I live in Vegas. There is no way with my engagements that I'd be uh, I'd be able to swing meeting somebody twice a month out of state at this time. Now, if you're if you're if you're really clever, if you're really clever, you're ahead of a few, you're ahead maybe two steps. Because I at this point I already know what's going on. Honestly, I know what's going on. I'm waiting for the sh the other shoe to drop, and I'm gonna have so much fun. Um. I could do an online buddy play thing easily enough, but that amount of travel is a bit much. It's understandable, and I know that you'd be scared about the distance. Do not worry about that. I'll try even possibly uh, every possible means to come first so we can meet each other and discuss about how we're going to deal uh, with that. <clears throat> well, I can, add you an, uh, I can add you for weekly payroll for $300 to start with. Which bank do you use? All right, kids, you caught up now? If you, if you haven't figured it out yet, 
Now you should have. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is, this is... I don't. I use PayPal and cryptocurrencies. This is my response. <clears throat> I'm having fun at this point. I'm literally having fun. I'm just like, all right, fuck it. You think you got, like, you didn't, sink the, you didn't sink the hook correctly. He didn't bait it correctly. He didn't sink it correctly. He did this wrong. Unfortunately, I run a custom business account, so it would uh, it wouldn't let me send money using any third party app, Cash Pay, Pay uh, Cash App, PayPal, Zelle, etc. Um, pity party. Um, ah, no worries. Oh, and thank you, pity and uh, Marcus. Um, so at this point, I say, well. You can always send me an envelope with a prepaid card up front as a good faith gesture to my P.O. box that I use. <clears throat> Homie want to play? I can play. Let's play. I was having fun. This is a good, it was a good diversion. I was making food. I was like doing a bunch of food prep last night and I was like, yeah, it's an inter it's a fun little diversion for a moment. Can you handle wire check? Which is not the correct terminology for this. The, the broken English is a dead giveaway. And at this point, I said, I, I just, I broke it down for him. I just, I just broke it down for him. <clears throat> I said, can you be less of an obvious scammer, man? Uh, I said, can you be less of an obvious scammer, man? So how many people have actually fallen for this? Just FYI, before it was uh, before I was a political streamer, I was actually an IT consultant who specialized in operational security for multi-million dollar uh, firms. It was the bank details question. You should have slow rolled that one. Instead, your insistence for means of access to wire transfer methodologies and other ways that give you access to account and routing numbers for a bank account are just a dead giveaway. So real talk, man. How many, uh, how many men have you managed to scam with this so far? You got any good paydays yet? No. He goes, I don't understand. Please explain for my better understanding. Bruh. You're not getting bank details out of me. Ever. Send me cash or a prepaid card to a P.O. box or nothing. Now, come back with an excuse or play hurts and bail on the grift. Either way, you just tried to work the wrong dude. It's at this point that he sends a fucking request over to unlock my pictures. Because the way the, the system works is I can keep my private photos locked. So he sends a fucking request for my locked photos at that point. I laughed. I laughed. I was just like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> so the plan is harvest photos now. That uh, the plan is to harvest photos now that uh, now that you've been caught out. Jesus, man, what country are you from? Your broken English gives you away. FYI, time to burn the account. I reported it. I respect the hustle, man, but up your game. At least do some recon first and figure out the technical skill set of the person you're working. And he, he read the message, but he didn't respond back. And I just, I yelled, boo, lame. Just a fun little thing that happened.
they only go on for a couple minutes. They only go on for a couple of minutes. Technically, it's listed as one minute. Hey, Zoma. <clears throat> hey, Zippy. Um... Yeah. I just... Just like, dude. Really? Like, really, man? Uh, so... It was a fun little thing that happened. Um, there's probably some headlines we could get to. Um... The coming wave of evictions is going to be a whole fucking thing. Um, I know a woman who sent someone like that to the to 2K. Jesus Christ. I just verified Facebook TV 75% pro fake profile spam. Jesus. Uh, just sore Albanian insults at them. <laughs> if I knew any, I probably would have. Um, yeah. I, I laughed. Hey, Fina. I laughed my ass off. I had a good giggle. I had a good giggle. I was like, you know, does it, I, I wish they never talked to me. I just want one to be real once, like for once, because I'll take the spam, like the scam phone calls and like the, the your social security number will be locked if you don't call the IRS, you know, shit like that. I'll talk to those people. I do it all the time. Like it, they they've stopped calling me as of like late, but um. Yeah, I, historically, I take those calls, and, like, I, I run a little game, and when it gets to that point, I just sort of break it down. I'm like, all right, man, like, we both know what's up here, right? Like, I know you're a scam. You know I know you're a scam. Like, what's up? Like, how much do you make? What's the deal? Like, be real with me. Like, I don't give a shit, man. Run your game. Get your hustle on. But, like, how much you making? What's your average? What's your high take? They never fucking talk to you for real, though. They never talk to you for real. I just so desperately want to get one of these fuckers to be like, just man up and be like, yeah, right, you know, fucking you caught me. But yeah, no, I fucking high tech. I took one person for 17,500 one day, you know, and fucking and I average we read, you know, I make a couple hundred a day, you know, something, just something. Tell them, talk to me. But now nah, they always, they always bitch out and fuck it. Fuck off. <clears throat> nice Zomo. I know, right? Beast, like beast, like just, just hook a brother up. Talk to me. Be real. Nah. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, um, Cricks, yeah, um, Cricks, um, in essence, what he's kind of, I, I kind of would, Viva, I kind of would, um, in essence, what they're kind of running is akin to a sweetheart scam, it's not technically a sweetheart scam, um, Sweethearts are way more personalized and, in my opinion, brutal, but it is um, akin to a sweetheart. Uh, and I find for myself, as a student of the con, as it were, um, the sweetheart to be one of the most morally or ethically detestable scams that a person can run. So yeah, what, what that motherfucker's doing is, for me, worse than the fucking, like, scamming old people social security stuff. But that's my own ethical framework. Yeah, oh yeah, um, brother, for sure. Um... Because, oh, <laughs> uh, nice zippy. Um, I, you know, I like I said, I respect the hustle. I get it. Fucking 
fat cat fucking comfortable westerners sitting sitting around in our like blah 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 and right these scams are coming from like parts of the world where fifteen hundred dollars could be a fucking year's salary right like for real like some of this some of this money is going to places where that becomes real money and sure of course it's tied to organized crime in a lot of ways and x y and z like don't think i'm not aware of the nuance involved in this conversation i am um but yeah like i get it i get it it's like pickpocketing tourists is what it is man what do you expect right you're gonna fucking you're gonna walk through some third world poor ass fucking nation with your like nikon fifteen hundred dollar camera dangling from your neck in a fucking fanny pack with your wallet and passport in it shit's gonna happen and i get it india pakistan romania bulgaria and kosovo i wasn't aware of the kosovo the the first three i i'm i'm aware of uh, Viva, but the Kosovo one's new to me. Um, I've found a lot of the wiring money. It's, I mean, it is a Nigerian scam for a reason. It's been that way since the mail service. Like that's not like the advent of that isn't yet email. The Nigerian scam started um, literally out of. Uh, it was a Nigerian scam that targeted the UK and targeted British citizens um, via postal service um, back in the day. Yeah. Like, it's been called the Nigerian scam way before the email stuff. Um, so, yeah. And, um, Karina, yeah. Yeah, I do, actually. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's a successful scam. It's a good racket. It works. Um... Uh, the Spanish prisoner thing is a bit different, um, but it's in the same territory, at least. Uh, one of those scammers tipped an old family friend of ours into suicide with a $7,000 scam, so I don't have a whole lot of respect for those people. Yeah, I mean, that's the that's the danger of the fucking, the grift. Because, like, you, it's, it's indiscriminate. You don't know who you're fucking taking, what their mental state, what their um, financial state is. But... That's capitalism. That's fucking currency. That's that's the world we live in. I don't see much difference, frankly, between a lot of this shit. A landlord demanding a rent increase, price increases in medicine and food, and some West African grifter fucking taking you for 7K. For me, ethically, it's all kind of the same. Columbia House Records. It's been a minute since that one, Beast. Yeah. For me, ethically, it's all the same stuff. It really is. So. Um. <laughs> I'll get rid right on that with her. Uh, tell him to send me his bank account information and I'll reverse the transaction. <laughs> you're adorable radio so how are the labor day protests in the states um the only protest that i'm aware of like off the top of my head here on me is this pro-choice rally outside of a texas hospital Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say pro-choice rally? I meant anti-vax rally.
Uh. <laughs> right with her? Uh. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, literally walking around chanting my body, my choice. The same. That's that's in Texas, by the way. That I didn't. That that is outside of a Texas hospital. They are unironically marching around a Texas hospital chanting my body, our choice, my body, our choice, my body, our choice. Ah. Uh. Brev, not ex explicitly, no. Yeah. So. All right. <clears throat> Except that's not a both sides argument. One of these isn't contagious. Pregnancy isn't catching. Your neighbor can't your neighbor getting pregnant doesn't get you pregnant. Your neighbor getting COVID could kill you. Public health issues such as vaccination have been universally recognized as exemptions to things since the inception of this fucking country up to and including George Washington. Do I want authoritarian measures in place? No, I want an educated populace who realizes uh, who realizes a, uh, a certain level of scientific and medical literacy so they willingly do it unlike the fucking dis uh, the disinformed miseducated morons we have now that are running around talking about how fuck the vaccine mu permanently mutates your DNA in X, Y, and Z fucking 5G Bill Gates satanic chip crap that I have to put up with. Ideally, I'd like an educated populace who willingly takes the vaccine on their own because they understand the health, uh, the greater public health ramifications of an unvac unvaccinated populace. But hey, who's got time for that, right? As, as George Carlin once said, who's got time for solutions? Eric, you have to be a big boy. Big boys get a toy from the toy chest. No, 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 no. <coughs> Eric, it's just a little prick. <laughs> no, no, no. Good boy, Eric. <coughs> See, I I had stopped watching South Park by this point. Yeah, that's why I'm not familiar with this. Our school now has a very strict policy when it comes to immunizations. Everyone has to follow protocol, or it puts everyone at risk. I'm sorry, PC Principal. It's just that my little Eric really doesn't like shots. Well, Eric, nobody likes shots. Just That's it. It's so he claims a religious exemption just because it's just no like greater conspiracy. He just doesn't want to take the shot, so he he pulls religious exemption. That figures. Fucking very Cartman. Very Cartman. Yeah, Voss, I'm not going to keep watching. Dude, content ID for fucking YouTube uploads is ridiculous, and that's from the South Park Studios, so chances are the audio and the video are both content ID'd. I'm not going to bother. Not on stream, at least. Um, hey, Frackle. Um, so, yeah. But, very Cartman. Uh, yeah, I... Yeah, I, I... Dude, this country was founded upon making people get vaccinated. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. George Washington fucking barricaded. Fucking barricaded Boston when there was a small pox outbreak. And to instructed his soldiers, anybody tries to break quarantine, shoot them dead. Forced vaccinations. This country was literally founded upon a vaccination policy.
like, I mean, I'm an anarchist. Like, I get to fucking claim exemption from basically everything, ideologically. Um, but as far as, like, my freedoms, fucking flag-waving morons, sorry, motherfucker. Like, America's never been about that. Never. Um... Oh, Fina. No. I, I've, I've covered that enough. I don't... I, everybody involved are terrible people. The protesters, the counter-protesters, I, I, they're all terrible people. I want nothing to do with any of them. And whoever put out the call for Black Bloc to get involved, and the Black Bloc that showed up, fuck them too. As a former participant, once upon a time, I mean, literally a decade and a half ago now, fuck them all. That was not a correct application of Black Bloc. Uh, apparently, Australia, I don't fucking know. But if they are, fuck all of them even more. Get over yourselves. Jesus goddamn Christ. The whole fucking thing was a shit show from beginning, middle, to end. Oh, Jesus Christ. Seriously? Brother, if you want to do some anti-vax shit, this isn't the channel for it. We got, we got people who have, like, we got some medical credentials in this community. Like, right? Like, homie. We already know the efficacy of the vaccine, especially in, even in breakthrough cases, the reduced, the reduction in, <clears throat> the reduction in lethality and mortality rates of the, uh, of a viral infection. If it does occur in a breakthrough, especially in the multi jab uh, ones such as Moderna, and we already see the reduction in long term COVID effects for the uh, for the vaccinated. Dude, go get your fucking vaccine. Like. And, and if you have, then stop fucking pounding that drum of, well, what do we really know? We know a fucking lot. It's just nobody wants to actually read the studies. When's the last time you sat down and read a fucking series of studies? I read an ivermectin study last just last night. I had to fucking sit down and read another medical study because this is what I do most of the day, apparently, is fucking read stuff that makes it makes it uh, it makes it, it further enables me to be capable of refuting the idiocy that I have to uh, be surrounded with on a day to day basis because now people are fucking chugging horse paste, which, by the way, fun fact, we found out from this one study, um, actually a series of studies. It was two studies, then this one. Um, males treated with ivermectin for river blindness show a decrease in um, fertility across the board, universally. Motility, morpho morphology, and count. It decreases your it decreases your fertility. In fact, there is a recommendation on the veterinary practice side of ivermectin to not give ivermectin to animals that you intend to breed. Hey, Jay Miles. Hey, maniac. Uh, my little brother who's like 20 now is arguing outside with my aunt, uh, who is now is out uh, arguing outside with my aunt, who is a doctor at a hospital who treats COVID patients and people dying all the time from no vaccine. She's still not able to talk to my brother out of being anti-vax. What do I do? Uh, Jay Miles, just return him. Just, just, you know, like, um, what would that be? Um, 240 month abortion, maybe? I don't know. Like, yeah, just return him. He's defective. I mean, the study is was conducted in Africa. Um, I mean, th there's look. It's it's a limited n. Um, it's a limited sample size. Um, but yeah, um, if you want the study, it's on shared content. We were discussing it last night. Scroll up. Um, I put some of the excerpts from the study. Um, yeah. Basically, 
um, treatment with, you see this is the difference. It, treatment for river blindness with ivermectin is a longer term treatment, but um, as a horse dewormer and a sheep dewormer, it's usually given in not extended treatments. And even in the veterinary practice, it is recommended that you not apply uh, ivermectin in a situation which you have breeding, you're going to be using them as breeding stock. So while the study on humans was a long-term study, 11th mo 11 month treatment with ivermectin for river blindness, um, the studies that are veterinary in origin are short-term treatments with ivermectin. And they also had the two different studies, um, the two different uh, doctors involved in that, um, had recommendations to not use ivermectin for breeding stock um, because it showed a reduction in fertility. Um, and not just like fertility, but morphology as well, the sh shape of the sperm so malformed sperm um and so long-term study in humans shows a universal decrease in fertility um studies in veterinary practice show a decrease in fertility for short-term usage um so it looks like yeah ivermectin may have the potential to affect fertility in males no matter the species so Um, <laughs> cupcake. I mean, I, 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 I want them to have this information. I, I want, if you want to self-select, I'm okay with that. That's informed consent. I don't want to run a eugenics program. Um, but if we put it out there that, Hey, like ivermectin treatment has the potential to affect your fertility rate and they yell fake news and whatever back in my face. That's self-selection. That's informed consent. I'm okay with that. So let's just put it out there that ivermectin affects fertility treat, uh, uh, affects fertility, sperm count, motility, and morphology. After that, our ethical um, requirements are met. Uh, me too. <clears throat> I mean, there's a so potential social cost there. Yeah. But. I mean. I got nothing for it, man. It is what it is. Nice. Good on you, pity. So, yeah, I mean, they, I got, I, I have a phrase in my head that I, I, I can't, I can't say like it's kind of, kind of cringe, but yeah, I, I don't care. Yeah, I know Zoma, but, um, <clears throat> Hey, I, I, again, as long as, oh, obesity is way worse. Um, uh, but yeah, as long as we make them aware, like, Hey, just so you know, there's multiple veterinary studies and at least one human case study, um, or 37 human case studies. Um, but one study involving humans that show ivermectin treatment has the potential to affect fertility rates. The shape, the ability to swim, and the overall count of your sperm in males. What you do with that information beyond that, 
not our responsibility. <laughs> Nonsense. Um, BMN for us be means bad movie night, Zippy. Um, <laughs> doesn't work that way, Zippy. Ah. Uh. I was just about to stretch anyway. Oh, oh yeah, that's totally EDM, uh, uh, EDM for sure, pretzel. Um, it's not an antiviral; it's an antiparasitic. <clears throat> and as we already covered, it causes fertility problems in males per multiple veterinary studies and at least one human study. So if they want to take it, take it. I don't care. Yeah, we're not, I'm not clicking that link. Let's see, pharmacokinetics of, <clears throat> of ivermectin, a semi-synthetic antitelmic uh, agent for oral administration. Class of highly, uh, highly active broad-spectrum antiparasitic agents isolated from the fermentation of streptomyces ivermitolias. Uh, ivermectin, mixture containing at least 90% 5-O-dimethyl 22-23-dihydro-rivamectin uh, uh, A. 1A and less than 10% of 5O dimethyl of uh, 25 uh, DE 1 methyl propyl 2 3 uh, sorry, sorry 22 23 dihydro methyl methyl uh, avermectin uh, generally referred to as 22 23 dihydro avermectin B1A and B1B or H2B1A or H2B1B respectively see this is this is an actual profile sheet an actual data sheet on ivermectin to whoever linked me to c19 ivermectin.com yeah pull an actual profile uh, profile data sheet on the drug next time homie um some of us that have pharmacological studies under our belt we default to profile data sheets um let's see Clinical Pharmacology, Pharmacokinetics. Um, no worries, Cricks. Um, Steel Dawn and Steel Frontier, double feature post-apocalyptic films. Um, let's see. Microbiology, there we go. Ivermectin is a member of an Avermectin class of broad-spectrum antiparasitic agents, which have a unique mode of action. Compounds of the class bind selectively and with high affinity to glutamate-gated chlorine ion channels, which occur in invertebrate nerve and muscle cell. This leads to an increase in permeability of cell membrane to chloride ions with hyperpolarization of the nerve and muscle cell, resulting in paralysis and death of the parasite. Compounds of this class interact with other ligand-gated chloride channels, such as those gated with neurotransmitter gamma aminobutyric acid, or GABA. You may have seen that before. Um, selected activity of the compound of this class is attributable to the fact that some mammals do not have glutamate-gated chloride channels and that the avermectins have a low affinity for mammalian ligand-gated chloride channels. In addition, it does not readily cross the blood-brain barrier in humans. Um, life, si uh, life cycle stages of many but not all nematodes. Microfillery of Oncoceros volvulus, which causes river blindness, um, but not against the adult form, only the uh, microfillery uh, tissue of it. Um, 
Let's see. I see nothing about protein affectation. I see nothing about protein spike affectation. Uh, let's see. Most of these, I do my own research. Fox don't even know data sheets exist. Um, yeah, it's 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 a fucking stupid idea. It's a stupid idea. Um, so if you want to fucking take ivermectin and neuter yourself, by all means, go for it. I don't know who that is. Freckle. Frontline COVID-19 Critical Care Alliance. Is that, are those the ones that were, um, those were the ones selling COVID cures, right? Yeah, never mind. I've heard of them. Anytime anybody describes something as a miracle drug, I mean, red flag, red flag, red flag. Jesus Christ, these fuckers described ivermectin as a miracle drug. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Frackle. Oh, scroll up in chat, um, and it's there. Um, if you weren't here for it, then... Um, it was Millie by Roy and Elad. M-I-L-Y by R-O-Y and E-L-A-D. Um... Tide Pods best, best vaccine. I mean, a vasectomy at this point basically is the best vaccine for these people. Jesus Christ. I, I, I would love to have been around for like the polio vaccine. Just like the beginning of the polio vaccine. How many of these fucking morons existed for the polio vaccine rollout? Do we have any historical account? Frackle, you're into this kind of shit. Um, do we have like protest signs from like the, the rollout of the polio vaccine? Like my body, my choice, fucking you won't, it's unfounded. It's untested. You won't fucking like, honestly, I want to see some like historical context for this. Like how many of these dumb fucks have been around for how long? polio vaccine hesitancy. What the polio epidemic can teach us about vaccine hesitancy by the School of Public Health at University of Michigan. 
somebody had the same thought as me, at least. No, no, it's a thing. It's a fucking thing. It's a th no, it's a fucking thing. Um, <clears throat> uh, World Health Organization representative in the Philippines noted coverage for three doses of or oral polio vaccine administration to young children younger than one year of age dropped from 71% in 2017 to 68% in 2018, the lowest in the past five years. Many countries that had achieved polio eradication or were very close to eradication have seen a resurgence in case largely attributable to, uh, attributable to vaccine hesitancy. Um, polio being eliminated in the U.S. 30 years ago, meaning there's no ongoing transmission of the virus, but a parent who's vaccine hesitant ultimately decides not to vaccine uh, vaccinate their new baby, increases chances of it becoming a thing. So historically, it doesn't look to be a thing uh, as much. Um, okay, so vaccine hesitancy uh, for smallpox in 1790s when Ed Edward Jenner developed the small uh, the uh, cowpox vaccine, which was protective against smallpox to some degree. Um, people decried it as being opposed to God's will. Um, other people misunderstanding of the vaccine put fears uh, had fears of putting foreign substances in one's body, publishing cartoons, satirizing people morphing into cows after being vaccinated. By 1980, smallpox had pretty much been eradicated from Earth. So it took us pretty much 200 years to overcome that bullshit. 200 fucking years. Um, by 1950s, North America and Europe, where the, the uh, vaccine originated, um, had eradicated it. So it took a little less than 200 years, 260, I'm sorry, 160 years um, for us to eradicate smallpox because of people who were fucking vaccine hesitant. Duly noted, Cricks. Uh, apparently, uh, brother, um, what led to the majority of that eradication was, uh, was the UK and the US passing laws instituting mandating uh, smallpox vaccines over multiple generations. That is what credited with the eradication of smallpox in this part of the world because people didn't do it for themselves. And as such, we would probably still have fucking smallpox. Which isn't a great argument for me as an anarchist. I'm literally arguing against my own political position at this point. So, trust. Like, that's... Yeah. Like, it, I, I'm not, not in the, our current state. I don't think people are fucking not with the level of disinformation miseducation and just dumb fuckery that is walking around i don't think we're i don't think the average human being i think one out of two people is too dumb to be able to understand this concept i'm not i'm not gonna dude i can't even begin to explain rna 
to the average fucking vaccine hesitant person, let alone what an mRNA vac- a vaccination pathway looks like, what, let alone what spike proteins are, let alone public health and uh, 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 fucking uh, epidemiology, right? Epidemiology. We, had, we need to start there. Like the conversation needs to start uh, at an epidemiological uh, d- uh, context, right? They don't under, uh, know what epidemiology is. I mean, fucking, these people need basic math. They need basic grammar, bas- basic English vocab. They need critical reasoning, uh, reading comprehension, um, fundamental scientific literacy before we can have a, con- a conversation about immunology, virology, and epidemiology. Ain't happening. And we've been through this before. Like, fuck it. Like, these people are dumb and they are killing other people. And at a certain point, every anarchist would tell you society and the individual both have the right to self-defense. If you want to be a fucking typhoid Mary, we have the right to defend ourselves against you. If you are willing to contract a highly contagious respiratory disease and walk around society spreading that to the wind, you are a threat to our well-being and we have the right to self-defense. Oh, look, the diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, the DPT um, vaccine had a documentary in 1982 called DPT Vaccine Roulette, highlighting stories of parents and doctors claiming that children developed seizures and permanent brain damage after the DPT vaccine. No long-term effects from the vaccine had, had been demonstrated. Documentary took research out of context to attack the safety of the vaccine, leading to decreased vaccination rates and lawsuits against vaccine manufacturers. uh, Litigation nearly destroyed the the vaccine uh, uh, manufacturers. Um, Jesus Christ. And of course, we know about Andrew Wakefield and his fucking publication about the MMR vaccine and how much how that created a new generation of Jenny McCarthy's. Well, we don't know what it, what its effects are. No, you don't. You don't understand it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I bet this is, yeah. Yeah, I've seen this before. Yep. During the Spanish flu era, officials pushing public health mandates to stop the pandemic in its tracks were met with pushback across the country from San Francisco to Atlanta, Denver to Cleveland. Pockets of opposition sprang up to decry the effects of restrictions on business, religious communities and ordinary people. History doesn't repeat, but it sure as fuck rhymes, folks. Mistopheles, yeah, that is a part of it. I agree. They think if they can't understand it, nobody else could. How could anyone be smarter than them? Estrella, we're gonna have we're gonna have two classes of people. We're gonna have two classes of like medical classes of people in this society. We are gonna have a generation of people potentially who have like HIV and cancer vaccines. And then we're going to have people who don't don't get them that we still have to treat for HIV, cancer, fucking COVID. We are going to gener- we are going to develop a generation of technology, vaccine technology out of this. 
And there are people who are going to fight us tooth and nail the whole way. Morlocks and Eloy. Uh, uh, Eloy, uh, Eloy in real life. Wells was right. Two hundred years to eradicate smallpox. Two hundred fucking years. Could have done it in a generation. Could have done it in a generation. Maybe two. Maybe two. Let's be generous. Could have done it in two generations. Two hundred years. Oh, pivot. Do you want some tape for that ankle, brother? You want that fucking pivot? You want some tape for that ankle so you don't break uh, you don't blow an ankle out on a pivot? Mm. Good on you, Mossy. Good on you. Oh. Everybody see the new color? The uh, the feet are that way too. It is. It is pink AF. <laughs> yeah, I look good in pink. Like it is it is a color for me. It's part of it's part of the palette. Crossing your legs as a man. <laughs> it's just a pain in the ass. Or, well, rather something else. Um, just straight up adjustment. <laughs> Out of passion. That's all that was. Straight up adjustment. Um, so. Thank you, Zippy. Oh. So you want to do May Day? We'll do the uh, we'll do the history of May Day, Labor Day sort of shit. <clears throat> God, you're dumb. Holy shit, you're dumb. All right. <clears throat> I'm tired of arguing with idiots that, like, I, 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 I'm not going to do it. So let's go back to what was the topic of the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're running a bingo card, wallet text straight up. Feel free to check it. Um... So, 
I wrote this is an episode of um, Proudly Radical for May Day last year. All right. Um, it was a podcast episode. Um, it, we were off air this year for May Day. May 1st fell on, I don't know, a weekend, I believe, Saturday. Um, so I didn't get to do a May Day episode this year. Um, I like doing May Day episodes, I think, um, especially as leftists, the history of... Um, it's coming up quickly, Astray. It's coming up quickly. Um, it's not quite here, but it's 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 almost here. Um, let me see if I can't find it. Oh, it passed. It passed. Um, Yep. Uh, it was August 25th. It was August 25th. Um, Yeah, I mean, feel free. Feel free. Yeah, see, Duffy's got the, the reasonable response there. All right. <clears throat> How is that? All right, well, whatever. Um, so, in 1889, May 1st was chosen by the Second International to be the day to honor workers the globe over. It's officially known as International Workers' Day to com commemorate the Haymarket Massacre. So let's start with some basics. Who or what is the Second International? We talk about this a lot. We talk about Bakunin and Marx fighting at the Second International, right? But we never really get into it very much. The Second International was the organization of socialists and labor parties that met and formed in Paris on July 14th, 1889. Delegates from 20 uh, countries participated. It continued with the work of uh, the dissolved First International, but unfortunately excluded the relatively powerful anarcho-syndicalist movement. We know why. It officially reformed in 1922 and became the Labor and Socialist International, lasting until about 1940. Now, don't get me wrong, I hold many differences with the rank and file of these organizations. They were generally pro-colonialism, uh, pro excluded what I consider to be brothers in ideology, the anarcho-syndicalists, and had member countries that took a little too long to condemn Nazism, to put it lightly. Now, but onto the show. What's the Haymarket Massacre, aka the Haymarket Affair? Well, that's a bit of a big thing, actually. It's one part protest, one part tragedy, one part sham, and one part mystery. So strap in. This is kind of a story. Um, <clears throat> on May 4th, 1886, at Haymarket Square in Chicago, Illinois, the day began with a peaceful rally in support of workers striking for an eight-hour workday. The primary organizing group behind this movement were the Knights of Labor, it was a group that rejected socialism and radicalism, but supported the eight-hour workday idea. During the labor slowdown that had begun several years earlier in 1882 and was still going all the way into 1886, their organization had grown immensely from 70,000 to, in total, over 700,000 workers. 
this was a large group with of organized downtrodden workers. In other words, a threat. They were, there were also several thousand anarchists at the time in Chicago to boot. This was sort of the heyday. It was leading into the heyday of labor movements. The, as I, you've heard me talk many times, the late 1880s to the 1920s. Right? This, this was the heyday of the labor market. It's this, this is when we got shit done. You see, this particular rally was spurned on by something we can all appreciate in modern America, the actions of police. More specifically, the police killing one protesting worker and injuring eight the prior day. See, we've talked about that before on this channel, the big stick, the origins of modern policing in America, how you have the slave patrols in the south and the big stick in the north, the big stick being the um, organized uh, means of breaking labor movements, the police foundations literally being built upon the uh, commerce and merchant class and how they would fund and buy all of the equipment, pay for the payroll, all of that sort of stuff. The big stick, this is what they used. They used it to kill a protesting worker and injure eight to try and break up this protest in, Hay uh, in the Haymarket Square. So following the incidents of the prior day, protesters began to rally in support of striking workers. Here's where shit goes off the rails. Now, as I tell you these next events, I want you to know ahead of time that to this very day, we don't know who took these actions, despite the very public trial that took place. Someone threw a bomb. As I said, we don't know who threw that bomb to this day. There are two suspected groups. One, a contingent of mostly German-speaking anarchists centered around a newspaper called Ar Arbeiter Zeitung. Sorry, 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 Germans. Sorry. Arbiter Zeitung, um, who admittedly had been into building and researching bombs, but by all accounts, likely didn't throw the bomb due to a few factors we'll discuss later on. Two, the Pinkertons, a.k.a. the Pinkerton National Detective Agency. Now, anyone familiar with a certain era of Hollywood movies and one fairly popular video game has likely heard this name more than a few times. <clears throat> the Pinkerton National Detective Agency is infamous in labor circles. They were founded by one Alan Pinkerton in 1850. They're still around as a subsidiary of Securitas AB. They became famous when Pinkerton claimed to have foiled a plot to assassinate, uh, assassinate President-elect Abraham Lincoln, who would go on to hire the agency for personal security during the Civil War. Notice the language there. He claimed. See, there wasn't any truly hard evidence as to the existence of that plot, and historical scholars to this day debate as to whether it was a complete fabrication or not. Many think he just made it up. The Pinkertons went on to become, quite literally, the world's largest private law enforcement organization at the height of its power. Now, here's where it gets obvious and interesting. Pinkertons became quite famous for one particular set of services. Union busting. Specifically, infiltration, disorganization, and violent confrontation with unionized workers. They would do just about anything at the behest of their capitalistic masters. People whose names you're guaranteed to recognize, such as Carnegie and Rockefeller. They worked for oil, mining, steel, and any other form of industry that could somehow, uh, that could somehow endow someone with the title of a robber baron at the time. The Pinkertons' active and reserve agents outnumbered the standing army of the United States. <clears throat> this agency delivered results by any means necessary, time and again. So... We have our two likely groups, but remember, as I said, to this day, even professional historians admit no one knows exactly what went down. 
The formal rally began under a light rain on in the evening of May 4th with August Spies, Albert Parsons, and Samuel Fielden speaking to a crowd of 600 to 3,000 people, not entirely sure, while standing on a wagon adjacent to the square on De Plains Street. At this point, there was a large contingent of officers observing from nearby. Paul Average, a historian who specializes in the study of anarchism, adds context to this situation. There seems to be to prevail. Uh, there seems to prevail the opinion in some quarters that this meeting had been called for the purposes of inaugurating a riot. Hence, the warlike preparations on the part of the so-called law and order. However, let me tell you that at the beginning that this meeting had not been called for any such purpose. The object of the meeting was to explain the general situation of the eight-hour movement and to throw light upon various incidents in connection with it. End quote. Following Spies' uh, speech came Parson, an Alabama-born editor of The Alarm, an English-language weekly. At this point, the crowd was so calm that the mayor of Chicago at the time, Carter Harrison Sr., had stopped by to watch, and then finding of nothing, uh, nothing of particular note, walked home early. Parsons spoke for about an hour before the last speaker of the evening, British-born Samuel Field, and delivered a brief 10-minute address as the weather was deteriorating and the crowd was growing weary of it. Now, all of the objective first-hand reports confirm this. So we're going to skip ahead slightly to mention some of the national press that covered the events that will follow. The New York Times ran an article entitled Rioting and Bloodshed in the Streets of Chicago, which claimed Fielden's words grew wilder and more violent as he proceeded for double the length actually true in the event. Another New York Times article ran with the headline Anarchist Red Hand and opened with the villainous teachings of the anarchist bore bloody fruit in Chicago tonight and before daylight at least a dozen stalwart men have laid down their lives as tribute. It called the strikers a mob and used quotations around the terms workers and working men. So, what happened? As close to exactly as we can get. At about 10.30 p.m., just as Fielden was wrapping up his speech, police arrived en masse and began marching in formation at the speaker's wagon, ordering the rally to disperse. Sound familiar? Seen these tactics recently? The police inspector John Bonfield announced loudly, quote, I command you in the name of law to desist and to disperse. It was at that moment that a homemade bomb with a brittle metal casing filled with dynamite ignited by a fuse was thrown into the path of the advancing police. Cue the clusterfuck. It exploded. Killing police, uh, policeman Matthias J. Deegan near instantly and mortally wounding six other officers. <clears throat> what ensued, though, was far, far worse. Witnesses maintained that following the detonation of the explosive, there was an exchange of gunfire. Lots and lots of gunfire. Accounts vary between whether there was, an, uh, there was even any fire coming from the protesters at all. In fact, an anonymous police official informed the Chicago Tribune at the time, quote, a very large number of police were wounded by each other's revolvers. It was every man for himself, and while some got two or three squares away, the rest emptied their revolvers mainly into each other. The end result of the menagerie of Copdom was four dead, 70 wounded, 60 of them police. So, all in all, seven police officers, four workers dead on site, with another dying two years later due to complications that never resolved. Cause and effect. Problem, reaction, solution. So what happened next, you may ask? <clears throat> exactly what would benefit everyone involved? Well, everyone except for the workers, of course. What came next was a brutally harsh clamping down on unions. A massive 
outpouring of support for the police involving many thousands of dollars being donated and effusive support being shown from the local and national businesses in the forms of generous donations. The entire labor and immigrant communities were immediately considered fair game and were targets by police involving raids on their homes and offices, resulting in dozens of unrelated arrests. In the process, such formalities as arrest warrants and search warrants were cast aside and ignored. The Chicago PD spent eight weeks shaking down every labor hall, meeting place, and place of business that any known union activist ever set foot in. During this, this civil rights nightmare scenario, a small group of anarchists who involved themselves in the making of bombs was discovered. Now, this wasn't that uncommon of a strategy, actually, in mining protests to set off a bomb in one section of the mine to set back or halt production. It's actually fairly common for the time. So, following the assumption that the anarchists were clearly responsible for what had occurred, they set about proving it. On the morning of May 5th, they raided the office of Arbiter Zetang, arresting <clears throat> its editor, August Spies, and his brother, whom they didn't charge. They also arrested the editorial assistant, Michael Schwab, and Adolf Fischer, a typesetter. The resultant search of the premises was that they found incriminating evidence in the form of propaganda and what they titled a, quote, revenge poster, all used by prosecution later. On May 7th, the police searched the premises of a Lewis Ling, where they found bombs and bomb-making materials. As well as Ling, an associate of Spies, Balthazar Rao, suspected as also somehow the bomber, was traced to Omaha and brought back to Chicago. Rao quickly be, uh, became one of the linchpins in this case, as after spending some alone time with the police, he confessed to having experimented with dynamite bombs and that the defendants had implanted, uh, implemented a code word, the German word for peace, in a previous iteration of the newspaper as a call to arms. Problem one. No evidence of this embedded code was ever found. Two. Problem two. Not a single witness recalled the German word, word Ruhe ever being uttered in any speech. Nobody ever said it. So, in the interim, the police have also, uh, also have more suspects they've gathered up. More importantly is Rudolf Schnaubelt, their now lead sus a suspect for the bomb thrower. Feel free to roll your eyes now. They've just are cycling through lead suspects. They had arrested Schnaubelt twice earlier, and by May 14th, he had fled the country. William Salinger, who had turned state's evidence, again, after spending some quality time with the Chicago PD, was granted immunity. On June 4th, 1886, the eight suspects were indicted by grand jury, which is anyone who's paid a lick of attention to attempts to try police for crimes in America know to be a joke unto themselves. And they then stood trial for being accessories to the murder of Officer Dagan. Of the eight rounded up, <clears throat> only two had actually been present when the bomb went off. August Spies and Samuel Fielden, who were busy steeping, uh, stepping down from the speaker's wagon in full view of the police at the time. Two others had been present at one point in the rally, but had been confirmed to have left early and had solid alibis for their locations as well. One other thing to note about these men was that only one was American-born, a man called Oscar Nieb. All the rest, immigrants. The trial was a sham. There's no other way to put it. It began on June 21st and went on to August 11th. Here's where all historians agree. The trial was a blatant miscarriage of justice. It occurred in what has been described as, quote, an atmosphere of extreme prejudice by both the public and media towards the defendants. 
It was presided over by Judge Joseph Gary, who displayed brazen open hostility towards the defendants, consistently ruling for the prosecution, throwing out any contradictory evidence, and failing to maintain judicial decorum in the form of openly speaking against the defendants during proceedings. One of the motions that was put forth by, uh, to try the defendants separately, denied of course, selection of the jury was interesting, to say the least. It lasted three weeks in total with nearly 1,000 people called. All union members, anyone who expressed union sympathies or was related to or associated with union members or socialistic tendencies, whatever that may have meant, were dismissed outright. In the end, a jury of 12 were seated. All, I repeat, all of them confessed prejudice against the defendants. Despite those professions, of course, Judge Gary impaneled that jury. Exhausting the preemptory challenges of the defense, the trial moved forward. One of the mainstay arguments of the prosecution when Julius Grinnell was that despite even if they had no knowledge of actions that may take place, since the defendants had not actively discouraged the throwing of the bomb that they may not have known existed, they were equally guilty. All in all, the jury heard the testimony of 118 people, primarily the Chicago PD, comprising 54 of the witnesses. Finally, some of the defendants themselves, Fielden, Schwab, Spies, and Parson. It was during these witness testimonies that Albert Parson's brother had his opportunity to bring forth evidence that he had that the Pinkertons were directly involved as the evidence was disallowed earlier. This attempt was squashed as well. You see... It was fairly common knowledge amongst the strikers and the protesters that a Pinkerton agent had been present and thrown the bomb, but since all witness accounts to that were stricken, it has effectively become lost to history to a large extent, since no one ever got the chance to pursue the lead. Oh, and one last great piece of shit fuckery to top off this mountainous pile of shit fuckery is the fact that the police investigator, Captain Michael Schock, who led this investigation, was dismissed from the police force for fabricating evidence in this case, but was reinstated in 1892. Of course, the jury returned a guilty verdict for all. Judge Gary may he be rotting in hell as we speak, sentenced seven of the defendants to death by hanging and one to 15 years in prison. Want to guess which one escaped the death penalty? Yeah, that's right, our American-born friend. The result of the verdict provoked outrage amongst the labor organizations and unions the world over, resulting in protests literally around the world and framing the men as martyrs to the cause. The trial, in combination with the sensationalist reporting and the lies put forth by Captain Shock in, a, in an account he titled Anarchy and Anarchism, resulted in a, patrol, a portrayal of anarchists to be bloodthirsty foreign fanatics. Some of the highlights of the articles about the events included such language as Arch counselors of riots, pillage, murder, bloody brutes, red ruffians, bloody monsters, cowards, cutthroats, thieves, assassins, and fiends. From the Chicago Times, the New York Times, the Atlantic Monthly, and so, so many others, the die was cast. In fact, George Frederick Parsons of the Atlantic Monthly wrote that the workers of the country only had themselves to blame for the fears that the wholesome middle-class Americans now had of them. One prescient point that Edward Availing made was that, quote, if these men are ultimately hanged, it will be the Chicago Tribune that has done it. The case was appealed all the way to the Supreme Court, where the petition was denied. 
Illinois Governor Richard James Oglesby, James Oglesby on November 10th, 1987, commuted the sentences of Fielden and Schwab. On the eve of Ling's execution, he managed to obtain a smuggled-in blasting cap, which he held between his teeth, much like a cigar. He bit down, detonating it. The resulting blast took off half his face. And unfortunately, and horrifically, he survived another six hours in that excruciating state. The next day, on November 11th, 1887, four defendants, Engel, Fisher, Parson, Spies, were taken to the gallows. White robes and hoods. This always gets a little weird for me. I may get emotional. They sang Marseille, the then anthem of the International Revolutionary Movement. Family members who attempted to see them one last time were arrested. Witness accounts from their final, mo uh, final moments concur on what was said. Spies shouted, The time will come when our silence will be more powerful than the voices you strangle today. In their last words, Engel and Fisher called out, Hurrah, hurrah for anarchism. For told you, forgive me. Parsons requested to speak and was cut off by the signal to open the trap door. Witnesses also agree that the hanging, hanging was not done properly, so to speak. The men were left to slowly strangle to death. A sight which, by reports, scarred the witnesses and left them visibly shaken. <clears throat> Notwithstanding the convictions for conspiracy, no bomber was ever actually brought to trial. While some historians, mainly two, Joel and Mesher Cruz, finger Schnaubelt as the likely culprit, many others still have their doubts. So, it's at this point we find ourselves back at the beginning. It was because of these events and the cause that made them possible that the Second International chose May 1st to honor the Haymarket martyrs and all of the workers who had been killed in association with the strikes. It would be this day that workers of the world could act in solidarity henceforth and demonstrate and fight for a better future for themselves and their brothers and sisters. So, wipe the tears. That brings us today, to today, um, Labor Day. Why is Labor Day in, all, uh, in September? Why is it not May 1st? Well... In the wake of multiple powerful global protests, there was building strength in the labor movement again. They had overcome it. They had overcome the bad press. They had overcome the machinations of the system. Countries across the world recognized International Workers' Day. Starting here, it started with an incident on our shores, in America, in Chicago. People demanding an eight-hour workday led to the machinations, deaths, corrupt judicial processes, and the, ultimately the hangings of martyrs. With these clashes building, this fervor growing in this country, the Washington, D.C. politicians and the business interests of this nation wanted to placate the labor movement. At the time, federal legislation to designate the Labor Day uh, a public holiday had been 
basically just stalled in Congress for months and months and months and months. A populist from South Dakota, um, a U.S. Senator James Kyle, um, introduced the, the bill um, to appease strikers and their supporters, and just the workers at, uh, across the board. President Cleveland, after the um, ARU joined the Pullman strike, which I'm not going to get into, but basically... The ARUs, the American Railway Union, and Pullman cars, um, basically, uh, Pullman was a brand for all intents and purposes, and striking workers refused to move the Pullman cars from one train to another, basically um, st stalling train travel, like transit across the country. Uh, when the ARU joined the Pullman strike, <coughs> commerce ground to a halt. So the bill was passed four days later. President Cleveland, who, hilariously enough, whose great-grandson my stepfather smoked his first joint with, right, these are some of the ties to these people I have, um, signed it into law that year, 1894. But it was a conciliatory measure, but it was also a distracting measure. They didn't want to associate this new holiday with the empowered labor movement and tie it to that historical knowledge, that memory of just how fucked it got. So they separated it. They, they pushed it aside. Rather than tie it to May 1st, the International Workers' Day, May 1st, May Day, the anniversary of the Haymarket Massacre, the day that the entirety of the system was shown for the corrupt entity that it was, they put it in September instead and called it Labor Day. There you go, kids. No, I don't, but I'm going to keep the tab open. Uh, will the link be in shared content? F oh, uh, for... What exactly, Zippy? Because I did just create a, um, a fucking video clip of that. That will be available. That 29-minute segment will be available on the YouTube channel. It will be a... a it'll... It'll be an independent clip uh, unto itself. I did just separate that out. That... So everybody, want, it, those who've been wondering what the fuck that make echoes thing is, that's what that is. That allows me to, there you go. It just got put into chat. If you click that link in chat right now, that will be that segment. I should have used it for those readings the other night. I didn't use it for those readings. It was stupid. I should have used it for those readings. <sighs> One of these days, we're gonna. I'm gonna read all of my essays on stream. I'm gonna. Um, we may have to reread some of my essays. So sorry for those of you who have heard them before for like two or three times sometimes. Um, but yeah, I need to do a bunch of those Make Echoes segments. Um, and I've been neglecting it for months and months and months. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, we'll see about that Audible Anarchist stuff. We'll see if I uh, get involved. Um...
Oh. Labor Day, yo. <laughs> cool teacher energy. <laughs> Thanks for the lesson, story time. Thank you, Mossy. Oh. That'd be dangerous as a teacher. Um, yep. 50% of anarchism is, uh, is education. 49% is direct action, 1% is take a day off and go do your down ticket voting. Um, it's actually not even that bad, Wither. It's not even that bad. It was just... Um, it was the spark that ignited a powder keg. But that powder keg had been filled a scoop at a time for generations and generations. It, it actually, in the grand scheme of things, wasn't that terrible as far as death toll goes. There have been some really fucked up incidents. The massacre at Blair Mountain. One day we'll do, I'll do this story. This, this is a story. Caboose, it would be a false flag. Yes, the Pinkertons were known to do those sorts of things. They they infiltrated and um, did agent provocateur operations. They did that. We we have records of the Pinkertons doing that. So yeah, yeah, it would it would be a, it would be a false flag agent provocateur situation on behalf of the Pinkertons. Yeah. Oh, uh, Po Pony 2017. Thank you for the follow 30 minutes ago when I was just starting, and just another brother. Thank you for the follow and uh, Draco forever. I should probably turn off the alerts for those sorts of segments. I know those a couple of them popped in the middle of the reading, um, which isn't great for the the clip across the board. Hey Watkins, um, but you know, is what it is. Maybe one day we'll redo it with alerts off and that sort of thing. Um, if I do this in the future and I'm, I'm going to do a reading, um, and you're here one, 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 if you're here and I do a reading in the future, remind me to record it via make echoes. Just tell me to fucking record the, the, the clip, right? Remind me ahead of time. And also two, tell me to turn my alerts off, please, please. And thank you. I need to crowdsource some of this shit because I forget to do it. Um, the ankle is iffy, and my neuropathy is bad. Redacted. Uh, even in the movies, are there random pinkness? Yeah. So. No, I, I mean no, Australia. For the most part, they are the enemy of leftists. The Pinkertons are, like, our sworn enemy, basically. Oh, Jesus. Watkins. That, oh, man. Are you, you better be vaccinated, man. That's all I have to say. Um. That sucks, though. They are. Frackle, they are. Like I said, they were at one time the world's largest standing private agency. They were bigger than the U.S. Army at their peak. They were huge. They were huge. Cool, Monkins. Um Yeah, they 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 had everything. They had armaments, they had fucking artillery, they had ships, they had fucking they had everything. They they were they were Blackwater before Blackwater was even a fucking you know anything like the descendants of that uh, the ancestors of that motherfucker hadn't even made it to shore yet right like yeah they were Blackwater for all intents and purposes no Trina I did not. 
Pinkerton said the means to do everything they wanted and the missions were to operate in secret. Many times they had some open operations as well. Um, but yeah, a lot of the time they, they were infiltration. They still exist, Trailhead. They're a, uh, they're a subdivision of Securitas AB. They, they, are, they are a subsidiary of a multinational security conglomerate now. But they still exist. So, yeah. Let's see. Oh, I'm gonna. Oh wait, hang on. I want to keep that. That. So that should automatically get uploaded to the YouTube channel upon completion of the show. Really? Why would you do that, Make Echoes? That is the side. Why would you do that? is the side. Why would you do that? I have no idea. Literally, every fucking. They have a list. You pull up your own account for recent streams, and they have a fucking list of three, six, Eight fucking users who are live of Make Echoes, which is still an alpha, by the way. The only reason I've never gotten rid of it is because I could, probably couldn't get back in. Um, and they just autoplay all of them. Just simultaneously. Jesus, that is dumb as fuck. All right. Um, Okay, yeah, so that should automatically be uploaded to the YouTube account upon completion of the show. Um... Um, <laughs> good on you, Nixa. Um, no idea, Zippy. No idea. Somebody may have, like, um, one of the mods may have done a, a, a point, um, return on you. So you may have gotten a bunch of them back. Joe did a point return on you. Yeah. Aww, you want to try harder than that, though? Um. This is adorable. Uh, why is it bad? I mean, it's not giving us much to work off of. Why is it bad? Um, it wasn't, it was, uh, it, it was me, me, Aka, me. It's, it's again, my writing. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, everyone knows it's bad. Hmm. Well, but you've got a recursive loop there. What is good? If bad is defined as not good, what is good? 
because your definitional set is requ uh, is uh, is requisite upon understanding the definition of good. So what is the definition of good? Just for shits and giggles. Uh, okay, beastical. Oh, you come on. You're not even trying. Bitch, I'm almost 40. <laughs> I'm the definition of a grown-up. I've run a very successful IT consultancy in Las Vegas, service multi-million dollar clients, house, car. Like, I'm the definition of a grown-up. Bring it, bitch. What you want to do? Why would I spend money on a Lamborghini? And also, those that generally own Lamborghinis don't refer to them as Lambos. Generally, the nouveau riche or the poor people refer to them as Lambos. There's other ways to spend your money than on gaudy things. Akka! Curtsy biddies. Thank you, Akka. Um, yeah. Experiences. Experiences. I can rent a Lambo. I've spent days at the track. I've driven nice cars. I've driven... See, the nice ones really aren't the ones you want to drive. Right? That's... You, you want to drive like a Lotus Elise. Right? Like that's that's what you want to want to drive. Like you want a track day car, right? Um, yeah. There's been days at the track. But you don't want to own something like that. That's ridiculous. The maintenance costs alone are fucking stupid. See, this is how you know somebody's either poor or their nouveau riche. They have no class, they have no sense of style or substance. They look at it something like a, ooh, Lambo. Like, you know, and? I mean, quite frankly, if you're gonna drop that kind of money on a vehicle, you should be spending it on something like an Aston, maybe. At least they've got style. David Brown, David Brown's design is meticulous. It's gorgeous. Kai, they tried to roll and troll in other channels and failed equally as bad. Boo boo. Pookie. Sweetheart. You're. You're like a baby trying to punch Mike Tyson. You can't get under my skin. And you're outclassed by me. In basically every way. So. Try another channel, maybe. Good luck. God bless, or whatever the fuck you believe in. But it's not going to work here. So. Ah. <sighs> Racy Cobra, not terrible. Of course, I'm I'm more of a if you're gonna if you if you're gonna okay. So we've we've shown this on stream before. If you see, this is the thing. Like somebody like him, fucking, it was like, oh, you could buy a Lambo, right? If you had that kind of money, if you had stupid money. That's what you buy. It's a million and a half dollar car. That is the definition of style and substance. Aka, 
It is. It is. It is the car from Bullet. And it is perfection. See, the fact that you don't even know what, what the deal with that car is, Blatt, that tells me everything I need to know. <laughs> that you don't know anything about vehicles. That you don't have any class. You don't understand style. That even if I were to give you five million dollars tomorrow, you would still be the same classless nouveau riche type that get turned away from the places that I grew up going to. See, people with class and money, old money, can smell your type a mile away. You're the type that when you attempt to gain membership to something like the Boston Athenaeum would be refused, even if you showed up with $250 million in your pocket. Because people of substance, people of lineage, know your type. You will forever be lesser than, plain and simple. And the fact that you go around just randomly saying things like being gay is bad, that's not the sort of thing people with class do. You can't buy class. So, good luck to you. Maybe one day you'll find something that fulfills yourself. Uh, yeah, skeptic, a little bit. Stop cyberbullying me. <laughs> Stop making it so easy. At one time, most of the world agreed with all sorts of things. Doesn't mean they were right. Uh, yeah, no, we've already done the skirt spin. I even did a curtsy, Skeptic. Hey, Blast. Everybody, it's about to happen. It's about to happen. Hey, Blast. Why don't you come on to the air and have this discussion with me? Come on. All right, you're not, a, you're not afraid of the queer, right? Come on the air. We'll send you the Discord link. Uh, well, see, here's the thing, Blast. If you don't, you get banned. So, basically what's just been issued is an ultimatum. We give you the Discord link and you get on the air and have this discussion, or you get removed from the channel. So, yeah. As Rev so eloquently put, it's time to shit or get off the pot, Blast. Do you have the cojones? Do you have the huevos? Really? Come on, man. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. But it has begun. well oh, 
anyway, what were you saying, Skeptic? I was dealing with a <clears throat> peasant. So I wanted to address something regarding your seeing as this sort of ethnic first matter but it's not the very first policing. Well, yeah, but that's not the point, skeptic. The point is metropolitan policing, not policing. That's a cowardly chud. Two more and I get a big go. Oh, yeah. Let's do a little fucking... Beta! Beta! Um, anyway. It's all they spew. Yeah, well. It's adorable to see them try. Um... Nice. Good to know, Frackle. Zippy just needs one more. Um, I have two friend requests and I don't know who the fuck they are. Then turn them down, Rev. Um, one out of ten. Get the teenage hormones before you go trolling. <laughs> uh, it's adorable that they think that that works. I hope they enjoy a good dildo before bed and think about what they've done. Uh, I need torchbearer and society. Mm, all right. Uh, the society one's kind of difficult to grab, uh, beasticle, and the torchbearer one, somebody needs to come in and challenge me by saying that anarchism won't be happening anytime soon or something like that on a global scale, and that, that usually triggers that. Oh, you know what I needed to talk about? Um, it's called Duck Sauce by Ellis, uh, Karina. Um, definitely non-binary. Definitely. Um, so we're doing a thing on the Discord server. Um, Basically, what I'm doing is I'm launching an interactive Discord version of um, my cheat sheet. I decided that the only way, like, if I were going to open source my cheat sheet, it would have been via GitHub or something like that, which would have been a barrier to entry for most people, right? So what I've decided to do is, yeah, Korean, it's the song name. Um... What I've decided to do is utilizing the new Discord threads feature, create a section, a category on the server. So far, I'm calling it information warfare. Um, there's like economic, environmental, LGBT, political science, technology, and OPSEC, theological, spiritual so far, right? So the channels will function as major categories and the threads will be topic. Um, so... Basically, what I'm looking for at this point is what I'm calling info editors, um, people who want to contribute to that section. Um, we will have basic formatting guidelines um, that need followed. You don't have to fucking, you know, be the, the, the Wikipedia editor who spends 600,000 fucking hours on, you know, contrib but some sort of regular contribution would be appreciated so we can build out that space so it can become a searchable space um, by the greater community and people at large so it can become a sort of resource for when we need something. Be it quotes, be it passages of the Bible, be it studies, be it whatever. Um, so... If anybody wants to actually participate in that, if you want to be part of like the early access team, there's two people in that already. Um, and I started like, I started working on it roughly last night. Let me know um, and I'll hook you up with that on Discord. It would be useful to all of us. Um, so yeah, I, I would like it to become a large cheat section and given the search function of discord we can actually you know make it pretty useful um in message links can create ta a table of contents 
So you can have a, a link to, you can have a post uh, or a message that you can edit and put the like links to subsequent messages in. So you can create like a linkable table of contents. There's a few formatting and uh, tricks and techniques that I can, I can show if you're not already aware of. Um, so yeah, we'll, um, hopefully get a few people involved and we can build a, a resource, um, that people can default to when they need something. Probably not zippy to be fair. Um, so yeah, let me know. I swear to God, don't just leave it to me. I know most people count on Kai to just do it himself. Um, yeah, see, that, that version of it doesn't concern me, Skeptic, but yeah. Um, what concerns me is the, the metro, modern metropolitan police forces. That's that's it de that's a departure from what would generally be recognized as policing systems, a la sheriff and deputy mod modalities of operation. Well, okay, it'll be available for reading on the Discord server. You'll just be able to access these those channels. But I, what I'm looking for at this juncture, before we even open it to anybody else to read, is people to contribute and edit. So. Yeah, that's that's step one is putting content there um, because I don't really want to leave it open just to general submission. We're going to have a channel for discussion and submission like that sort of thing like, hey, this should be in there. Or like, what about this? Um, but I need people to function as first primary input um, contributors and then secondarily as intermediary editors for community contributions. Uh, um, that's okay. Jesus Christ, how the fuck did he pull that off? Um, show less. Of course. Um, Glazy, you need to go learn something. Um, do we still have the link? Where's the link? Oops, wrong one entirely. There you go, Glazy. You need to go learn something. Go watch that and come back. It's a half an hour long. And I'll literally explain to explain it to you. Children. Um, what are you going to do with the cabbages, Kvass? So, uh, headlines, headlines, headlines. What do we have? Um, oh yeah, uh, this is a fun one. House Republicans wrote a, uh, like a letter to the Yahoo chief executive Off officer, Marissa Mayer, complaining about big tech and shit like that. She hasn't been CEO since 2017. <laughs> Um, just, just a fun aside. Um, just dummies, just dummies. Like I'm like, we're surrounded by governed by and controlled by dummies. It's astounding. I wish you thought it was nice to hear from him. <laughs> oh, how lovely. 
Um, yeah, that is true, Caboose. I just saw that go up in shared content. 2015. Lol, wouldn't it be funny if Trump won? 2021. The Supreme Court refuses to stop $10,000 bounties on raped pregnant 13-year-olds trying to have abortions. Yeah, I know, right, Carpe? Um, well, uh, Carpe, fucking, if you weren't here for the, the Why Labor Day is a sham fucking May Day explanation... Um, I, I created a clip out of it. It'll be up on the YouTube channel here after the show completes. Make Echoes will automatically upload it for me. Feel free to use it and spread it around. Um, it's a historic, it's written by me. Uh, it's a historical retelling of uh, May 1st from an anarchist perspective, the Haymarket Massacre, and culminating in the explanation of why Labor Day is in September instead. Um, it should be a useful piece of uh, of uh, education because I walk people through. I've been doing a Mayday episode for a while, and I didn't get the opportunity to do one this year because um, Mayday is an anarchist thing. Like it is, it is the the fucking martyrs are anarchists. The the eight hour workday while the fucking movement that was uh, the Knights of Labor or Knights of Workers. Um, that were involved were, you know, non-socialist, non-anarchist. The people who were all railroaded, they're anarchists. We were the ones who took the hit for that one. Um, it's one of ours. So, um, Altos Labs, um, they're an anti-aging venture that's, um, intended to cheat death. Just got a massive, um, influx of cash. Um, from Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos is funding a lab that is attempting to cheat death. <sighs> yeah, that's that's it, Karina. <laughs> I'm told that a good way to cheat death is to have food and shelter. Funny how that works. Oops. Right click. There we go. Yeah, Ray Kurzweil or the fuck that guy's name. Ray Kurtz and those of Ova. Yeah. Uh, fucking... So, yeah, Kurzweil. Um, Kurzweil, yeah. Um, yeah, Aka, the, the, the blood donor fucking young 18-year-old blood donations ain't cutting it anymore, apparently. Um, so a federal court in North Carolina, um, I, I'm sorry, not in North Carolina, but a U.S. District Court um, Judge Max Cogburn um, ruled that um, the Catholics can't fire teachers because they're gay. Yeah, we're this is this is this is a case that we're having to fucking try. Um, a, a Charlotte, North Carolina Catholic high school, and the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Charlotte, um, fired a gay substitute drama and English teacher. It's a substitute fucking drama teacher. What they think he was? Really? Come on, he's one of ours. Um. They they fired uh, they fired him for being gay. Straight up, um, and Cogburn ruled that they were in violation of Title VII of the Civil Rights Act. You can't fire them because of sexual discrimination under the, uh, Title VII. Um, he wrote that the school's actions weren't protected by constitutional rights to religious freedom. He ruled that the school's actions didn't fit into exemptions to labor law that give religious institutions leeway to require certain employees to adhere to religious teachings. Quote, plaintiff is a lay employee who comes onto the campus of a religious school for the limited purpose of teaching secular classes with no mandate to inculcate students with Catholic teachings. Um, 
the school and the diocese are at present quoted to say, uh, to uh, that they are considering whether to appeal the ruling. Um, he sought back pay, benefits, punitive damages, and compensatory damages for emotional distress and a court order blocking the school and diocese from firing any other LGBTQ teachers in the future. Um, yeah, they fired him after he announced his wedding to another uh, to a man on Facebook. <sighs> yeah, clogging up our court system too while we're at it. That costs taxpayers money, right? Like that's that cost us money. Oh, um, in the um, UN refugee uh, in uh, Kakuma, the the, the Kakuma Re UN refugee that's on the border of God, I know this, but I can't get it. Oh, between Kenya and South Sudan. There we go. Um. It's, it's on the border between Kenya and South Sudan. Um, they, they're having a spate of uh, homophobic uh, attacks. Um, this was, um, here, copy image address. This was late last night. Um, the houses of uh, known lesbians and gay people in the camp were being burned by fellow refugees because <clears throat> homophobia isn't just the singular province of you know angry inbred white people so yeah Speaking of East Africa, a government headed by a Nobel Peace Prize winner is currently engaging in ethnic cleansing because Ethiopia is apparently where irony goes to die. Um, yes, that region has a, a couple of problems, like pressing at the moment. Um, so, mm. um, Oh, and terrible news, everybody. Terrible news. Tragic. Tragic. So, thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Um, Richard Spencer, the known white supremacist responsible for the Charlottesville bullshit, including the death of Heather, um is saying that his life is in shambles his wife has left him he's a social outcast and he's completely broke and can't afford his attorney for his trial next month for his role in charlottesville so you know thoughts and prayers Caboose, yes, that is Richard Spencer. Um, and this. This was posted on Reddit earlier today.
generally, if you're unfamiliar with this tactic, <clears throat> this is what landlords do when they want to get everybody out. So they can change the tenancy requirements or overhaul the apartments and do condos, high price condos, that sort of thing. They jack the rates through the roof. It's a tactic to get everybody out. It is legal, radio. It is it is it is perfectly legal in most places. There's a few places where it would be controlled, but when all the seats are skyboxes, no one will be watching the game. A very interesting way to put that nonsense. Um. Oh, also, this is a fun one. So, apparently, the automated hiring software that literally is responsible for not insignificant portions of the U.S. Uh, hiring market, up to and including, quote, millions of viable candidates, um has been rejecting millions of viable candidates. Uh, apparently, the automated systems that have been employed by the U.S. labor market to streamline the HR pr uh, hiring practices basically um, turn everybody away, including people who would be correct for the job. Um, yeah. I wonder how long that's been happening. Oh, and Mexico City's getting rid of their their uh, Columbus statues. They're, uh, they had a Columbus statue up. They're swapping it for an indigenous woman. FYI. Um. <laughs> Axel. Have you tried putting on a suit, printing out your resume, and going up to the manager to ask for a job? You don't forget a firm handshake, too, Axel, while you're at it. Look him straight, look him straight in the eye and give him a firm handshake, too. I hear that. That counts. Um, yeah, there's some Frida stuff in here, actually. Um, so, in, in none of this bullshit matters news, um, apparently Mark Cuban, um, so, <laughs> Mark Cuban is basically saying he's not going to play the national anthem at his games. Um, in protest and a square <sighs> they're saying that they're basically saying that it, um, he may have to pay Texas millions of dollars they're threatening him with like millions of dollars if he doesn't play the song basically the way this works is that he already receives the millions of dollars in government funding from the state of texas and the state of texas is saying if you don't play the magic song 
then we want our money back. So this is sort of like I said in the none of this shit matters news. The government of the state of Texas is funding sports programs of a billionaire to the tune of millions of dollars and it is suddenly contingent on whether he plays the all rise fucking brainwashy song America so basically um, so <laughs> all of this is contingent upon a new law in Texas that prohibits a government entity from entering into a financial agreement with a professional sports team unless the team agrees to play the national anthem at the start of home games They have a law on the books making that a thing. So theoretically, his contract would be null and void with the state of Texas. And as such, any funds that were dispersed may be liable for reclamation of some in some manner. Oh. Uh, Ninja, it's always been such a disaster, quite frankly, but it's just, you know, gaining speed. See, Walata, this is what multiple people brought up. Um, what version of the national anthem? Who's, whose version of the national anthem? Like, who's, who's... Could you get fucking, like, Anti-Flag or some, like, other punk band to do a fucking version of the National Anthem? Just saying. You play it at 69 times speed. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, Swede and Axel both had the same idea. Speed it up to three seconds long. <laughs> the drag queen who did the Pride Parade song. How about them? Um, play it on accordion to make all the singers sing off key. <laughs> Some 60 minute post rock instrumental jam. Oh, some like prog rock fucking like heyday era of like prog rock sort of shit. Fucking some experimental it, 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 like narrative version of the national anthem. Yeah. Fucking national anthem ca uh, causes the game to be like four hours like past whatever it is, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, this is this is an experimental journey into the national anthem and what it means to be American. And if you're not here for all of it and you don't stand for all four hours, then you're a terrible American and not a patriot. Ugh. Rob Zombie. Yeah. I actually feel like the GOP is a white nationalist movement now. There are a couple of things. You're, there are a couple of things, but yeah, I mean, that definitely is a component of it. But, I mean, that's always been a component of it to a certain extent. <gasps> Gilbert Gottfried. Gilbert Gottfried. Gilbert Gottfried. We could have Gilbert Gottfried do a prog rock, like, 60-minute version of the national anthem. 
That might be high art, actually. With expressive jazz dancing to match. <laughs> Gilbert Godfrey Mortal Kombat theme metal cover of the National Anthem. <laughs> Test your might. <laughs> Test your might. Anybody ever heard him in real life? You ever, have you ever heard Gilbert Godfrey? None of that is there. None of it. He sounds just like a normal dude. None of that affect. It's just an affectation he puts on for stage. It all goes away when he speaks normally. There's not a lick of it there. Of course, sweet, of course. Nice. I respect it. Um, it's a long and dedicated group. It's, I mean, everybody in like Hollywood, everybody in show business knows it's not his real voice. Like it's, it's not like he's, he's just, it, it is, it is showmanship. It is theater. It is a character he plays. Yeah. Have Danny Elfman do it. You know what? Yeah, why not? I was just thinking like we could get like um like proper orchestral backing and dude I fucking it's a shame Daft Punk retired. Fucking get Daft Punk to do some techno fucking prog rock innovation shit with Gilbert Gottfried doing vocals. That'd be, that'd be great. Oh. Yeah, same with Fran Drescher and her voice. Yeah, it's, it's complete affectation. It just goes away. Um, I might even actually have it. Hang on. Um... Uh, you know what? I I know where to find it. Give me one sec. Howard Stern. Of a cartoon character. You are what what voice is this from? Aladdin. Aladdin you please. Oh. Like when they start crying. Yeah. This is Gilbert calling Gary from years ago on the answering machine. Yes. Okay. And this is Gilbert's real voice. <laughs> All right. Just as scary. Yes. All right, but it's like a whole different guy. Oh. All right, here it is. Yeah, Gary, it's Gilbert. You I'll can't. probably be there tomorrow, but um if you could call up uh, call me up. And just tell me what exactly is going on tomorrow. You know what's, you know who's going to be there and everything like that. Um, that's the scariest Gilbert. Yeah. Wow. People are afraid that's, of. That's that's Gilbert Godfrey's real voice. It's just it's just a dude's voice. There's nothing crazy about it. Yeah, it's just it's just a random dude's voice. The the nasally Jewy thing he does is a theatrical affectation that he puts on for the purposes of stage and show. I'm surprised as well, Beast. Honestly, it speaks to some level of vocal coaching because that's rough. That's rough. That the constrictor that's required to get up there in that fucking... That's, dude, that's a tightening. 
I'm surprised because when you come down, when you clamp that hard on your vocal cords, they rub. They rub. Yeah, I'm that that speaks to some level of vocal coaching. Yeah. You can ninja. Yes, you can, for sure. Um yeah, exactly, Caboose. You wouldn't know who the fuck it is. Um Oh, Swede, um, everybody else gets the option. Swede, I'm automatically assigning you a role on disc on the Discord server. We're, I'm starting an information warfare section, and there's going to be an econ section, and I want you to have edit, uh, like editorial capability, like input on what can go into threads and stuff like that, um, because you're automatically and uh, you have expertise in econ. Um, I'm not asking you, but if you want to contribute content to that section, that'd be great. Um, also, it would be a repository where you could just point people to in the future. Like, stop asking me questions. It's already in there sort of shit. Um, but I'm going to assign you that role so you can have access to the econ section as, a, as an editor. Um, just out of the gate. Uh, because, again, you're an expert in economics. Far more than most of us, at least. Uh, yes, um, Rev, um, that is that is true. Um, the the voice of Fry on Futurama, um, done by, <laughs> um, uh, let's see, uh, it's um, God, it's what's his fucking name? Uh, yeah, Billy West, um, voiced Fry as his own voice. That way he couldn't be replaced. That was, it was literally, he's owned up to that tactic. He said, yeah, I just did my own voice so nobody could do me. Yeah, nice try, Swede. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if that goes in. We'll have to see. Um, yeah, that's that's less sources, um, Square. I'm going to have to clean that up. Um that's that's more shared content um um and then that reminds me where is fucking irish there you are roles info editor automatic um yeah um sweet if there is anything you want to contribute it to the econ section um you billy west is a lot of people um i i can help with formatting um and that sort of stuff but if there is content like the the channel will be econ um but then we will have threads for topics so like threads will be treated as like chapters or topical uh sort of things so if there's stuff that you think people should have like if there's like a basics or introduction to leftist economics or something like that, a thread that you want to create or that sort of thing. And, you know, you think that people should have this information. If you want to work with me in the like editor discussion channel, um, I can do most of the like formatting and legwork for you, not for other people who do if you get involved in this. But Swede is busy and I value his expertise so <laughs> i'm willing to make accommodations um if you want to get with me that like if there is stuff that you think like yeah this is the sort of shit that people should know or ask a lot um i'll i'll do the plugging in for you um yeah like but you know yeah sweet is special get over it yeah basically um because yeah there's a lot of that stuff that you that sort of you just know and take for granted probably but that like us normals have to work for so yeah if you can like th just in the back of your head over the coming weeks and months like yeah okay formulate some shit and toss it my way and tell me how it should be put up I'll, I'll, thank you please and thank you um that way in the future when somebody bugs you you can just fucking point them um 
Hey, like I think I th- well, sweet. I think people need the 101 first. So if you can help formulate the 101 and how to transition the 101 to 201, that'd be even more powerful. Yeah, that'd be super fucking powerful. Because yeah, people need the 101 to start with. Most people don't even have that 101, sweet. So we need to figure out how to make 101 approachable for leftists and like anarchists and fucking communists and people like that who don't even, they need that 101 first. Um, And then that 101 to 201 transition that as you've pointed out before is incredibly difficult to maneuver. But yeah, I would, I would happily house it all. Um, Um, so if, if you, if you want, like, um, if you could go over to like the technology and OPSEC channel, um, you can sort of see how it's going to be formatted, um, Swede. Um, so you can see the like operational security for the activist. So that's the topic like, you know, and we could do like introduction, Chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. Those are all individual threads. And then you click that thread and it will open up that section and you can sort of see how that's being formatted. And that'll give you an idea of what 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 we can do and what Discord is capable of building as far as an information set. Um, uh, Rev, I mean, the theological and spiritual section is going to be like i mean this is this is an information warfare category it's it is an information warfare category this is this is for people to arm themselves so if if i were to say like what would go in from a prescriptive sort of point of view a prefigurative point of view for the spirituality would be the information necessary to defend themselves against the charlatans that often operate in those areas the theological section will be you know defending yourself against the fucking all of the bible thumpers and hindu nationalists even and stuff like that but the spiritual portion of the theological spiritual would be probably defending yourself against the fucking new age fucking spiritual like uh fucking mms church and shit like that um yes nonsense we are only we're doing it whole like truthfully like with integrity um well rev then do you want in um i mean you you say the word and the role is yours um it's called conspirituality. <laughs> Is that actually the thing it's called, Ninja? Um. Okay. Oh, by the way, it also comes with a nifty green uh, username role. If you're not already a, a minister, the minister role, uh, the purple for your minister is higher than. Um, calling to god is higher than so if you already have a purple name it's not going to overwrite it but if you don't have a color on your name on discord you will be getting green from being an editor um well rev then you will keep your purple automatically you will not you will not see that um oh did i not do uh i didn't do that all right so that one missed that one there you go Well, Rev, I mean, I don't need promises, but I, you know, something. Um, yes, there's a podcast called that too. Interesting. Uh, is, would there be a section on state theory? Buddhist, um, that will go under the political science section. Um, yes, there, there is a, there is a section for political science. Infowars with research and no grift. Yeah, basically. Time, basically. Um, you are, Carpe. You, you oh, oh, you just joined and you're ordained. Um, okay, so Carpe, roll, proudly ordained. Done. Um, I mean, Exel, not directly, but it does have the 
happy side effect of doing that. But no, it's mostly just a compendium of resources, organized uh, collaborative resources for the community to tap into. So when you have that sort of moment where you're like, fuck, I'm arguing against somebody and they're making this point. Let me jump over to the the, uh, the Proudly Radical Discord really f fast and jump in their information warfare section. And we'll have a, you know, a, a channel for that. Oh, shit, I'm arguing with a Bible thumper. Go to the theology section, quickly fucking search for whatever the fuck they're talking about, and hopefully we'll have a thread on that. And you can pull up that and have talking points or arguments or rebuttals or whatever or context for what they're saying. That way, yeah, I want to create... I want to create a cheat sheet. Like I already have a cheat sheet, but it's non-collaborative and it's formatted mostly for me. Um, I want something the community can participate in, um, but with some level of community editorial control. That way it doesn't become a clusterfuck. So I want a set of editors who are comfortable operating in that space to populate it initially. And then with a once we open it up past alpha then we will have a community discussion channel for suggestions and content contributions that the editors or myself can then plug into the various spaces maintaining formatting control that way it again doesn't become a clusterfuck correct yeah we have 27 ordained I think we may have more. Let me check. Um, no, we have 26. We have 26. Carpe was already on the list. <laughs> 24 hour church. Okay. Uh, Swede fucking remind me. Oh, September 18th. Oh, that's going to be a day for me. Um, I will stop by, Swede. Um, I'm pretty sure the 18th. <laughs> yep. The 18th at 7 p.m. <laughs> I'm giggling like a fucking maniac. Do y'all want to know what I'm doing on the 18th at 7 p.m.? <laughs> I will, I will, I will stop by, Swede. I will, I will stop by for your, your, your stream. Um, no, no, I'm not, I mean, no, no, I'm not, I'm not getting fucked. No, Goose. <laughs> I'm getting my dick pierced. I'm getting a Prince Albert. Yeah. Aka, Aka had it. Aka hot. Aka got to it. It came up on my screen a, a, ahead of time because you guys are on a delay. Aka got there in time. Aka had it. Yep, Aka knew. Uh, <laughs> Aka. Uh, good on you. Ah, uh, <laughs> hey Rumble. <laughs> No, Carpe, I don't giggle like that by getting fucked. Like, that's a common occurrence. <laughs> I get laid. Uh, it's, I don't mean to be that, like, you know, I have sex guy, but I, I get laid. Um, yeah, the, that giggle is... <laughs> Albert, kinky, I prefer the latter, personally. Um, Frenum piercings. Yeah. Um, Caboose, from what I've heard, it's not very painful at all. Um, project is projecting, Karina. It's projecting. We'll we'll see. This is only Karina. This is just for you. We'll see if I have the balls to go through with it. Um, and here I'm involuntarily. <laughs> uh, rumble. Um. <laughs> Oh, uh, that one's just f for me and very select people. Uh, Aka, that one I'm playing close to the vest. Um, there's a slim chance that Jason Ritter will stop by. That would be super cool, sweet. Um, 
it really doesn't hurt that much at all. My septum was worse. Yeah, I would, yeah, I'd imagine that. Dude, the septum piercings freak me out. Um, the new, All the new bio ladies are either, t either taken or meth. <laughs> Um, I mean, aesthetics, uh, Caboose, I mean, that, that alone, I mean, is there, is there a point to any piercing, Caboose? Is there any point to any piercing? Like, really? Ergonomics. <laughs> um... It does allow for some advanced play in other areas. Uh, let's just put it that way. Oh, Karina. <laughs> oh, stretch. Uh, um, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not the penetrative partner. Right, like I'm, I'm not the, I'm not the one who does the topping, so it wouldn't function in that way with me either way. Um, Kiko, thank you for the follow. Um, I am. Sweet. Um. I'm never going to get over the fact that you're, like, d deep in, sweet. Redacted going to? That's an interesting, uh, <clears throat> phrasing. Um, I, I, I don't, you know, it, it is, it is, I mean, I, I had my doubts, Zippy, as well, about the name. I had my doubts. Um... I find myself blushing from the thought of sharing as much as you do about one's personal life. I uh, use gumballs, man. At a certain point, um, you stop giving a shit, Crix. At a certain point, you just you just sit back and you go, yeah, none of that matters. Like the only way it matters is if you have shame about it. If if you're embarrassed by it, then you hide it. But I mean, if you don't give a shit, if you're not, if you're not embarrassed by it, then it's just a story. And I got to tell you, I live for a story. That's the whole fucking point. That's the whole point. Look, it, there's, there's no point to any of this. There's no point to any of this. You have to make your own reason. You have to make your own cause. And if you... It, if you're looking for a good reason, if you're looking for a good cause, if you're looking to, for a point, I would submit to you a good story is the entire reason for existence. I love a good story. I love a crazy fucking story. Right? Like That's kind of the whole point. I've been thinking about doing that. I've been thinking about getting a Prince Albert for years. And I never had I, I never had the the chutzpah to do it. I I remember <clears throat> my mother fucked me up in this regard, right? Um, she saw me one time when I was still like twenty two or something like that, right? Right, like too old to give a shit but i'm a mama's boy right she saw me with my navel piercing and her literal first reaction was yeah still it still to this day i remember that fucking reaction like like it was yesterday and it fucked with my head now the piercing fell out in bed i didn't take it out i didn't have that like oh well it's not a go and now it's got a go reaction right but it kind of fucked with me right and i come from while we are allowed certain leeway in tech, there is also certain conservatism in high technology. A lot of tech bros and shit like that, right? Like, it, it's fine if I want to have, like, blue spiky hair and fucking dress down and shit like that. But there is, there's, there's a limit to what you can pull off 
with all of the tech bros. And so that sort of stuff always like influenced me to some degree. And then a fear of needles and what if it goes wrong and the anxiety involved. I'm broken beyond belief. My neuropathy kills me on a daily basis. I fucking share myself to the world in this form and fashion. What do I have to lose at this point, right? I've been thinking about it for a while and I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm doing it. So I booked the appointment last week. Um, best piercing shop in Las Vegas. Um, I literally like the best. Um, and with the owner, um, this guy who founded the shop and does the, has the reputation, um, you know? And so, yeah, well, why not? What do I have to lose? Hey, Skoro. It's been pretty good, actually. Um, you still want to get your tongue filleted one of these days? I mean, Beastical, that's a that's sort of... We'll have a chat sometime, Beast. We'll have a chat sometime. Why are nerds so weirdly prudish at times? I, Dude, I wish I knew. Like I had friends who hated talking about anything. I knew virgins who were super cool with it. I never understood their issues, the Vs and non-Vs among them. Yeah, I have no idea. Um... My roommate in college had a Prince Albert and the other one, and ultimately he advised against. Why Trailhead? That was, um, why? I'd love to know his reason. Yes, Rev. Um, yeah, I, I do believe that's, that's, I, I, I know. I know he, I, he meant bifurcation. I knew what he was going after. Um, <sighs> that's fucking weird as shit when you have it long enough and you can control both sides independently. Dude, that's weird as fuck. Um, yeah. Permanent, permanent body mods are something that fascinate me. Um, f on a couple of different fronts. Um, but the, 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 the willingness to go through with the permanence of it, there are some things you don't undo. You just can't undo them. Like there are body mods that you cannot undo that they're, they're just, it's, you're done. It's, it's that way. Now you live with it. Right. And they can seriously change the trajectory of your life. They can, they can impact things and the willingness to go through that to know in your heart of hearts that yeah no fuck it this is what i want and i'm doing it all other things be damned i'm fascinated with that mindset <clears throat> i don't believe so karina um he said it would get caught up sometimes and i don't get that uh i get much more than that oh well i mean trailhead that's i mean whatever um i plan on doing all permanent ser uh, serious body mods when i'm old astrea um, I know of one tattoo story that had a 80 year old getting like straight up vaginal tattoo, like full on. Yeah. You're never too old. Apparently it was apparently really difficult. Like it was the thinning of the skin in the genital area in the advanced age was a challenge. Um, it was like a high watermark for the tattoo artist to achieve that. Um, they, they put a lot of effort into, into doing it. Um, but it was accomplished. Um, so, you know, oh no, sweet. I wouldn't do something as crude as fucking super glue. I could remove super glue. That's not permanent. Um, uh, Axel, yes. Uh, uh, magnetic implants in like, tr uh, like uh, subdermal magnetic implants are a thing that biohackers do. Um, and it gives you a six, it gives you a, an extra sense. Um, you can feel like, you know, f uh, uh, ferrous metals and magnetic fields using them because it pulls at your skin. So you can literally develop a sensation for it. So yeah, it, it's, yeah, that was the thing. Um, Photographer I knew used to live with the body mod guy, Sampravon Cyborg. Some of the shoots they did were insane. Oh, I'd imagine. I watched the BME panel at this hour's question. How does one decide now is the time? Um, Daka. You just decide. I guess, I guess if I had to channel it, 
it would be the same way I decided that I was going to take up skydiving back in the day. Like, I, I decided before I was 18. I decided, fuck, I probably decided when I was 14 or 15. The whole point to get to age 18 is to jump, just throw myself out of a fucking airplane, right? That goes wrong. That's pretty permanent too, right? But, yeah, I, I think it's just, I think, one, there's a personality that has a tendency to do it. I think, two, there is a, a, a decisiveness to those personalities and three also a uh, willingness to say fuck society fuck fuck it all i'm just doing it um and the bme pain olympics are always amazing um uh daca respect for watching them most people can't do that i i i find them fascinating They said they could feel the proximity motors and electric fi electromagnetic fields. Yeah, look, like that's that's it. Literally, does lend itself to a new sense. Wait, what did you? Hang on, Buddhist. What did you post? Okay, I might be able to contribute to that. I spent a good bit on my undergraduate studies working with my mentor on state theory stuff, which culminated in my senior project on how state theorists define the state, ending up being very critical of how they work. I'd say yes. Uh, Buddhist, if you want in on it, you let me know. Um, what's your... If Okay, okay, so there you are. Buddhist, if you want the editor role and you want to be involved in forming some of the like political science section of um of the info war uh, in the info war fucking section of the information warfare section you say the word and i'll issue the role um yeah it is in it's the info war section like straight up like i'm doing it like i'm taking it back but i'm calling it inf information warfare like it's supposed to be Y'all are talking about removing a skin tag, aren't you? Um, I respect it, DACA. Yeah. Implantable NFC. Uh, near field communications, uh, for those of you that don't know. But and, um, an NFC chip that would just send the link for a Rick roll. Um, Gamma. Gamma wants in, too. Oh, you were talking about clipping the ten. Oh, Jesus Christ, Rev. People in London implant their oyster card into their hands. I mean, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> that the entire econ section would just be bringing saying, Isn't that corrupt? On repeat, <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically, basically. Um, <gasps> oh, yeah, Rev, you would what you'd want to do is, I mean, I could. Yeah. You'd want a lidocaine injection for that. Done. You should see it now. There will be an entire section that opened up. Um, 
so so everybody knows anybody who's gained an editor role who's here um if you want to talk about what you're doing or you know work stuff out put it in the editor discussion channel that way we can keep the the the, the primary channels clean because i do want like an order to them if we can maintain it um because some of them are going to be all over the place like the theological spiritual sort of thing isn't going to have like a, a, a chronological or a alphabetical order to it but something like the economics section definitely would benefit from a logical progressive order of things starting at like econ 101 moving into sort of stu other stuff um Whereas like the technological and opsec section, uh, which by the way, if you're in there and you want to read the the like uh, opsec for operational security for the activist section, like I already put that up, um, and I will continue expanding that into more advanced realms probably. Um, but you know, yes. Um, oh yeah, that's my permissions are wrong then. Um, There. Now you shouldn't see it, Zippy. <laughs> um, I it's it's closed for now. Let's just put it that way. Um. Ah, you're fine, Marcus. No, we're starting with econometrics, econometrics, and uh, start far one right away. Yeah, makes sense. Um. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's hilarious, Kaiser. Um, the meme section. Um, will everyone get to see them? Yes, Estrella, everyone will get to see them. Um, right now, we are basically in pre-alpha status. Like, we don't even have an alpha build yet. Um, so, like... It is not ready for even public eyes in any way, shape, or form. When we have <clears throat> a workable set of stuff, when we have content that I can, con that we can consider collectively some level of alpha release, then we may do a limited segment, like, hey, come look at what we're doing, and then we may release further. Um, but for now, yeah, the like the general community doesn't need to be involved in the the, the creation and the, the the cultivation of the the, the basics. Um, road crew, oh, yeah, Kvass. If you go in now, you might get hurt on raw construction. Road crew only. Yeah, basically. Um, Uh, you branded yourself. Didn't have good enough wire, though, so they healed. Interesting. So I have a couple of body modders in community. If, if, if I need to separate out, like, the theological from the spiritual and give it its own thing, I'm, I'm 100% on that. Um, because that, that feels like those two, I, I crammed them into one. But it feels like those might benefit from being separated out. So if you want that, let me know. I will do that. Yeah, if there's any modifications or like subset channels that people want created uh, from the editors, you let me know and I will make that happen. Um, thank you for the follow recreational stress. <laughs> it's a hell of a name you got there. Uh. You need to separate theism from atheistic spirituality. Um, okay, I think uh, those two should... Okay, cool. Um, then, done and done. Um, clone it. Done. 
They're separated. Um. Okay, so, so far we have economic, environmental, LGBT, political science, technology, OPSEC. Um, you know what? I'm just going to put technology down um, and I'm just going to drop OPSEC um, because it will be under there. There will be a thread operational security for the activist. Um, so uh, political science, technology, theological, and spiritual so far. Um, and if we need new categories, new chapters, as it were, or I'm sorry, new books, um, because the threads will operate as chapters. Um, and then, um, so if we need new books or volumes, um, I will create channels as necessary. So if any of the editors feel like we need new channels, there you go. Um, <clears throat> oh, I'm one of those. Sweet. Fucking. Um. The only time I've ever actually, like, slept in a bed proper with somebody, like, really, really, um, which is hilarious given I've had a partner before, um, was in high school with my best friend, um, who I consider a sister to this day, um, and she, 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 she gave one of the best accounts of what it's like to sleep in a bed with Kai. She said, partway through the night, you literally turn 90 degrees put your feet against my hip and just push me off the bed. She said, you didn't even wake up for it. She said, you literally just shoved me off the bed without even waking up. I'm like, I... Yeah, that's what it's like to sleep with me. Guy <laughs> says, get the fuck out. Yeah, basically. I don't share beds. I don't share beds. I don't share sleeping space. Like, I don't I don't like to sleep in the same room with somebody. <laughs> Fatality. <laughs> Yeet! Yeah, I sho shoved her right the fuck out of the bed. She, she said, you didn't even wake up for it. I'm like... Um, I heard you say branding reminded me of a time a friend and I in 2000 tried to burn boat anchors into our arms. I mean, that's a thing you can try to do. From burning sticks in the fire pit while we were tripping on acid in the Homer spit in Alaska. Cricks, this is what I mean about stories, folks. That's a story. That's a that's that's a story you collect. Right now I have somebody in my community. I, I've heard this story. I can collect this story. Cricks fucking shared that with me. That is currency in my world, right? Cricks just fucking kicked down. That's a donation in my world, right? So, fuck it. Yeah, it was time me and a friend were fucking just tripping on acid up in the uh, Homer's Bit in Alaska, and we start pulling sticks out of the fucking fire, trying to burn boat anchors into our arms. That's a good story. I like it. I respect it. Um, I agree. Sharing beds is for sex. I, yes. Yes. Radio, yes. Um... I'd rather sleep on the floor than share a bed with somebody. Agreed. Agreed. Um, I had a woman do that to me during sex and then asked me what was wrong. She had issues. Mm. I flop around like a fish and change direction like six times. Daka. I, I get that. If I'm on a bed, I'll still somehow end up on the floor. I've seen multiple people light their own crotches on fire. My crotch has never been lit on fire. I have done a, many a stupid things involving my crotch. Um, but never has it been lit on fire. I've only lit my face on fire, says Duffy. Um, either stone or fish occasional sleepwalking i has i have had one incidence of sleepwalking in my entire life it was um when i was a toddler and we were visiting my grandparents in florida we had um just spent the day at disney world and i so we came down we went to disney world the same day we got there early in the morning and I, we went to Disney World, and so it was my first time in their new house in Florida. I had been basically up all day as a, like, I don't know, fucking 
four year old, something like that, right? And they caught me sleepwalking. Like I, it was, it was the only incidence of sleepwalking ever in my life. So disrupted circadian rhythm, new location, overexcitement of nervous system, culminating in a toddler version of me sleepwalking. It's the only time it's ever happened. Um, I saw my dad with his head on fire a couple of times. Interesting. I've burned some stuff onto my extremities. Uh, I should tell you. Uh, I should tell you about the day me and a bunch of farm executives tripped on amphetamines that they successfully put into uh, into thin strip delivery system. Think Listerine pocket pack. Motherfucker, Swede, bitch. Yes, I need that story. Then there's the opposite group in which we don't have a human. Uh, we hold long pillows and cry. Oh, Karina, I'm sorry. Caboose, I lit my hair on fire once. <laughs> oh, wait, two modes. Either toss and turn all night or anxiety shakes all night if I'm sharing with somebody. Oh, Jesus. Uh, probably find me sleeping pilot salad against the wall. <laughs> um... Self scar the only self scarification I've done is my buddy and I put salt and ice in our arms and let the ice melt. I mean that's a thing. Jesus, Daka. Florida is to America what America is to Canada. That is true. That is it. That is a fair. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, we have two full beds squ squished uh, directly next to each other, so they sort of form one giant bed, but we can thrash around without disturbing each other. Some sense. Smart. Smart. Um. If you're priming the carburetor on a van, put the gas can a couple yards away before trying to start it. Uh, Rev, I, yeah, I already knew to do that. Um, <laughs> you, <dumb motherfucker. laughs> you learned that wasn't the hard way, did you, Rev? Um, I got sleep horny and apparently like a drunk person mumble my dream aloud. Most, it mostly happens when I'm not alone. Subconscious wants them. Hmm, interesting, Karina. Uh, Karina gets thirsty in her sleep. Um, for the branding infections, or if you burn a wire, you're usually good, but it don't tear it open and keep it clean. Shit. Oh, yeah. Uh, fun story from my high school metal shop class, which involved the hair on fire. Sorry. Ah, I look forward to that, Caboose. Um, once, I've still got a bang tree growing in because of a stove. Uh, fill a beer can <laughs> taught me that one. We're bored 15 and living in a town of 250 people, Daka. I get it, Daka. I get it. I've been there. I've been there. I get it. Uh, Botula. Physically, no, it's fucking miserable. But as far as everything else goes, you know, things, some things are shaping up. Um, Swede, sleep well. Um, somebody remind me to fucking get that story out of Swede sometime in the future. Um... Um, I mean, okay, so, hmm. um, I think maybe we can keep a fucking running list, like a pinned message on, um, sorry, I'm, um, fucking radio. Um, I think we can maybe keep, keep a pinned message on the editor discussion section of who is editing what section so we can consult it. That that would be useful, yeah. Um, so we can we can do that. Um, God damn it! Um. Um, I suppose, I suppose, I mean, for now, um, 
So, uh, who's doing what? Rev and okay. Um, there we go. And then we'll I'll pin that, and we can edit that as necessary. Um. Recreational, um, I mean, I, I know a couple, I, I know two, I know two that aren't poor that have their septums pierced. Um, so I mean, you know, maybe exceptions that prove the rule sort of situation. Um, but, um, I, at one time, um, I mean, congratulations, Stardust, I guess, if you're into that, I mean, otherwise, ooh. um, yeah, recreational. Um, otherwise, at one time, I started, I was keeping track of how many, like, uh, retail workers that I saw um, with septum piercings. I was I was counting, and it, the number was getting kind of ridiculous. Um, from the local, like, the, the closest Whole Foods to me alone, I got up to 11. Which, I mean, Whole Foods, Las Vegas, right? Like, it sort of makes sense, but... Yeah, yeah, they're just, I mean, I wouldn't say poor. I mean, I would, I would, I would lean away from using the term poor because the fact of the matter is, is that based on most of the people I know's standards, chances are you're poor. Um, so, you know, yeah, but I, I knew, I know two upper middle class people that have septum piercings. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Also, who cares? I mean, it, I mean, I don't, I don't give a shit, Australia. But when I started noticing so many of them, I was like, how many fucking people around here have their septum pierced? I started counting. I was like, Jesus Christ. Um. But yeah. Yeah, at the end of the day, who gives a shit? Um, I know some trust punks with septum piercings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hipsters, trust punks, trustafarians um, definitely have septum piercings and um, bridge piercings. Yeah, I know a few of those. Uh, Marcus, then let me add you. Um, first I'll add you to, okay, so your religion, um, I suppose I'm on that list too. Um, all right, then let me find you. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Marcus, thank you for the gift sub. Um, congratulations, Australia. All right, Marcus, just type something in the comments so I don't have to search for your fucking user, uh, your user account on the server. Just put something in the comments for me, please, Marcus. Um, Save me a lot of fucking scrolling. Um, oh, uh, Buddhist, you're for the poly side. That's right. Fucking thank you, thank you. Um... Thank you. Cool. Is that all Stardust came to say? I don't know. Um, oh, you know the phrase Trustafarian. I'm complete. Yeah, of course I know the phrase Trustafarian. Uh, or the word Trustafarian. Yeah, for sure. Are you kidding me? You think I haven't known some Trustafarians? <laughs> The circles I run in? Are you shitting me? I probably know more trust of ours. <laughs> I may have known the dude who coined the damn term trust of ours. I don't fucking know. Um, 
Either way. All right, so yeah, we need to get some other sections. We've got an LGBT section uh, on the on the information warfare category. Uh, in we've got an LGB, uh, LGBT uh, channel. So if somebody actually is super familiar with like LGBT history and you want to participate in this project and build that out, and you're familiar with like if you if you do a lot of the LGBT like battle stuff, like fuck you, I'm valid um stuff let me know like i did that'd be super useful take that off my hands because i'm not uh, imminently schooled in my community's history i mean i know the, i know the parts that i participated in and i know the, the the highlights um but for the most part yeah like if that's if that's your thing let me know uh, i'd be happy to let, load that one off onto somebody because i've already got a few. Um, also, we got environmental up for grabs. If that's your passion, let me know. Um, funny side note to my story, 5 a.m. It was also midsummer, but I convinced my friend that the rising sun reflecting off the clouds was the northern lights and then started running around taking pictures and yelling and screaming, look at all the colors in the sky. And other campers were looking and laughing while some yelling, shut the fuck up, you morons are trying to sleep. So much fun. Um... Cricks. Good times. Young and dumb, right? Young and dumb. My passion is sex in general. But I don't have a degree. Fair enough. Oh. Um, okay, so Caboose. I mean, if Caboose, you're already in there as an editor. If you want a, if you want a signed an area, or if you just want a free float, it's up to you. Um, I don't know how to. You know, I love you, Caboose. Um, I'll free float for now. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say you, 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 you probably can apply the some of that. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna hit with it. You can apply some of that, like, dude, Caboose. I'm trying. I'm just trying to, to kind of kindly say that we could weaponize your autism. Uh, just, just point it at whatever you need to point it at, Caboose, and fucking contribute. <laughs> I did. I, I got there in the end, Caboose. I got there in the end. I did it. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Oh, oh! <laughs> Did you hear the telling of <laughs> state of the um state of the China is their closest? I did, I did see that skeptic. Um, <laughs> see, that's a, I only am comfortable with it because Caboose is comfortable with it. Um. <laughs> Oh. Wait, what about Tucker? <laughs> Will the Taliban still allow us to have the internet when they take over? No. I mean, yeah, probably, but they did a highly censored version of it. Like, wearing a hat normally is weird. I don't, I don't like wearing a hat normally. It looks weird. Um... Yeah, and China to help them implement the technology. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, I remember Skeptic, but I mean, I also remember the next minute when they said um, women stay off the streets because our fighters haven't been, uh, instru haven't been trained to respect women. <laughs> so, you know... Yeah. Uh, we have the hostage. Uh, um, we have the hostage video uploaded on the Discord server, actually, in the shared content section. Dude, that hostage video is hilarious. Fucking newscaster, you know, like, oh yes, they are fucking, you know, at fucking gunpoint. Um. Yeah, it was it was a hell of a video, actually. <laughs> like, bunch of fucking dudes with AK forty seven surrounding him, and him just like. Sure, sure, sure. We will respect the freedom of the press.
Yeah, read paper. Shut up. Um, yeah, no, that was that dude. Honestly, I laughed my ass off at that video. Um. It, fuck yeah, sugar daddy. Uh, or sugar mama. Get you some. Oh, oh yeah, I want to look at this. This this audible anarchist thing that somebody sent. Um, Alright, so for the past couple of months I've been interested in and later volunteering for a group called Audible Anarchists. Group of volunteers making audiobook versions of text thought to be useful. Blah, blah, blah. Currently, the main project is reading Rudolf Rocker's Nationalism and Culture. Jesus Christ, really? That's where they fucking... That's their main project right now? Um, readers are free to contribute a reading on any text they wish. Speaking of the group, is always open to more volunteers. All you need is a means to record audio and access to the text you wish to read. Audio editing skills, but speaking from experience is unnecessary. They have experienced editors. YouTube channel. Okay. Videos. What do they got? I mean, this is not a small collection. This is a really big collection going back years now. Okay, so... I can contribute to this. Oh god, the fucking who's reading this one? I have that. I, I mean, I've got most of these books to be quite frank. Um, interesting. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna participate in this. I think I'm gonna participate in that. Uh, uh, anarchist fucking what is it? Audible anarchist? Yeah, I'll 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 participate in that project. Um. One of my bosses is a leading Sharia scholar, and every time the Taliban makes headlines, his response is basically, this is going to be the rest of my week, isn't it? Poor guy. Poor fucking guy. Um. <laughs> What's up, Scott? Oh. It's Labor Day. We had to... I already, um, I already did a, uh, uh, cause I, I have a fucking essay and a half on the origins of May Day. And since we, you know, Labor Day is a sham since it was done to placate the labor movements by president Cleveland and a fucking captured Congress in this country. Um, so that's what we did today is I've read fucking half an hour worth of, um, my essay on the origins of May Day and the Haymarket Massacre leading into why Labor Day is a sham. Um, so, welcome. Um, I'll t fucking, did you warn him? Did you warn him, Scott, at least, before you brought him here? Um... Uh, botula, what'd you say? <clears throat> terms, uh, in terms of myself, I'm just, oh, okay. Okay, you're sick. I brought the chuds, enjoy. Ah, it's okay, we can fucking crack skulls. You're the only one that can hang intellectually anyway, so we'll do what needs doing. Um, no, we were just discussing, um, participating in the Audible Anarchist, uh, project. I'm gonna do some reading for him, I think. Um, uh, yes, if you are going to be chuddy, you need to be funny. 
Uh, we will tolerate insane levels of bullshit, but you have to be amusing. If you don't amuse us, then, like, there's no point in keeping a boring chud. Right? Like, that's... That's fucking useless. Nobody has time for a boring chud. Right? If you're gonna, tr if you're gonna troll, fucking be interesting. Be entertaining. Like, be original. Be creative. Be engaging. Um... Yeah, we'll let you talk about why you think genocide is a good thing. Just be amusing about it, please. Um, and yes, we do, con we do consider a capitalistic regime genocidal, just FYI. Um, uh, no, tr oh, Jesus. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to you know some of the actual. <laughs> Um, <laughs> amuse me. Um, exactly, Marcus. It's more like amuse the community. Um, but yeah, no. Um, yeah, I, 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 I I'm going to do a bunch of readings of my own texts, actually, Scott, rather than other people's, um, because my writing is educational. <laughs> um, and as the community has told me, multiple people, I mean, Jesus Christ, one of my essays is used in schools, like several, like around the globe at this point even. Um, so yeah, like I might as well put voice, my voice to some of my own writing, but I'm also going to probably do some of the, you know, standard stuff. Uh, but right now we're in just chatting. We basically got off the rails. Uh, we started talking about body modifications, piercings, and fucked up stories from our youth. So that's sort of where we ended up. <clears throat> we're also running a project um, behind the scenes. Um, so we're doing a thing. We're doing a thing, y'all. Uh, I have a question for the community because I've been dealing with Sven and racist comments in many channels. Oh, Jesus Christ. Does he get his Swedish propaganda from Tim Pool? I've lost my patience. I want to know if he's racist or dumb. Thanks, guys. Um, Crix? Yes. I put my money on ignorant and bored. He's definitely ignorant. He's definitely ignorant. He plays like he knows stuff and he does the sort of gotcha setups and he just like when it fails, he's just got nothing. It just falls flat. Um so I definitely ignorant. Um definitely a child. Um definitely like arrested development territory for sure. Um So I mean, we, we, yeah. And then he does the, I'm sorry guys, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's part of his MO. We removed him from the community. We gave him many, many chances. We removed him from the community. Yeah. Um, me and Kez have the same belief that Sven is just dumb. Um, It is, uh, 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 perk. Um, it is. And if you don't own it, if you try and deny your own history, I mean, I don't talk about the, um, that era that much on stream because that era has passed, but the 1880s to the 1920s and the heyday of the labor movement and the propaganda of the deed is violent, but the history of mankind is violent. The history of neoliberal capitalism is violent to the tune of millions and millions dead. The history of uh, commun uh, centralizing authoritarian communism is violent, right? The history of mankind is writ with violence. The foundations of this very nation are writ in violence, right? So if anarchists try and deny the existence of that violence, then we come across as inauthentic. But what we can do is not focus on it. What we can do is say, like, yeah, it was necessary in many regards for that era, but it would be counterproductive for now. 
and it would play into the hands of the system as a whole now because the system as a whole now is set up to accommodate, capture, and otherwise uh, contain violence. They know how to deal with it. They want you to be violent because that plays into their system, the prison, military, industrial complex, as it were. That plays into their hand. So while violence may have been a uh, episode in the past of anarchistic history, it isn't the chapter we're on now. And so one should discourage that violence um, as a political tactic. Um, there are far more subversive, far more effective methodologies of, of subverting the system. Um, uh, a la Saul Alinsky, um, who I'm a big proponent of, and Alinsky-esque ta- tactics work wonders. Um, I mean... Scott, like we, I mean, we talked quite a bit about the Pinkertons and how they were at one time. I mean, the Pinkertons were a fucking ANCAP libertarian wet dream. The Pinkertons were the world's largest standing, uh, they were a larger standing army than the uh, United States Army at one time. They were the world's largest standing detective agency for many, many years. They dwarfed the U.S. military at one time in their history, all up for purchase. To the bi- highest bidder, whether that bidder was Carnegie, whether that bidder was Rockefeller, all up for the highest bidder. Um, and they were utilized just as the big stick was utilized. Um, the police force, the origins and problems with modern policing. It's a, a thing. It's an episode I've had to do so many fucking times at this point. The origins of policing in North America are influenced by two groups, the slave patrol and the big stick. The Slave Patrol is in the Deep South, and I hope everybody knows what the fuck that's about. And the Big Stick was in the North. It was the foundational metropolitan police forces of this country. Boston is the first metropolitan police force of this country. It quickly spread to New York and Chicago and outwards from Philadelphia and outwards from there. Um, And the Big Stick was generally the colloquialism used for those metropolitan police forces. And those metropolitan police forces were funded, set up, and operated wholly by the merchant and capitalist class of this nation. The uniforms, the weapons, the buildings, the salaries, the land that it was built on, purchased all by the merchant and capitalist class of this country. And anytime there was a union or labor dispute that occurred, they would call in the big stick. They'd call in the police department, and the police department would directly act as a weapon to maintain the status quo of the uh, capitalist class in this nation. That is, that's just the origins of it. Um, so, yeah. Like, the Pinkertons were just another extension of what has always been a police system that was up for purchase. And the slave patrol was up for purchase as well. Uh, Plantation owners could hire and contract out to the slave patrols to come in and act as a de facto uh, punishment uh, methodology of punishment on the plantation. Um, If somebody needed a hand chopped off, the slave patrol could be contracted out to do that. The police force in this country has always been for sale. So even the, the default police force is to the highest bidder always has been still is go to a a policeman's ball glad hand with them see who's there it's all of the business types it's all the capitalist class it's all the politicians and capitalist class of this nation spending oh yes 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 yes. buffy and i donated a million dollars to the the uh, police benevolence fund last uh, last year Oh, they were so wonderful. When our uh, when uh, when those riots came to town, oh, they came right away and protected our factory. Shit like that. It happens all the time. That's we we know who the police protect. They they protect the oligarchs. They protect the moneyed class. Always has been. I mean, it's going to be that way for a minute. I don't I don't want to say it always will, but it's going to be it's going to be that way for a minute. So, yeah, Pinkertons are just an extension of that. They're just an offshoot of that. They're, they're Blackwater. Could 1,013, could 1,312 dollars get me in? Uh, get me? Uh, what could 1,312 dollars get me? Um, a ticket, maybe, to one of those balls, depending on where you are, what municipality, maybe a ticket. 
uh, take it into the ball. Um, yeah, the Penguins were just an extension of that. Um, they were Blackwater before Blackwater was Blackwater. Long before Blackwater was a thing, the Pinkertons existed. And they were happy to infiltrate, disrupt, act as agent provocateurs. I mean, to this day, most of us still think, like, there, there's anarchist historians, there are other historians, there, there's, we sincerely, there is a possibility, a chance, a likelihood that the bomb thrown at the Haymarket affair, at the Haymarket protest, was thrown by a Pinkerton agent. Yeah, basically, Scott. Um... They do, actually. They, they have a lot of fucking policeman balls. Like, that's a thing. Um, and it'll, it'll eventually, when the show ends, it'll automatically be uploaded to the YouTube channel. But if any of Scott's people are still here and you want to actually watch it ahead of time, the link is in chat. Um, that is, that is an anarchist. Sorry, Scott. That is an anarchist telling the history of the Haymarket Affair, and it's as written by me, right? Like, I consult historians and that sort of stuff, um, and that's the telling of the Haymarket Affair. Um, up to and including the miscarriage of justice, the hangings, um, and then the tie-in at the end just explaining that basically Grover Cleveland's, uh, Cleveland's bullshit government, who, by the way, fun fact... Um, my stepfather, um, smoked his first joint with the great grandson of Grover Cleveland. Um, these are sorts of circles I run in. Um, and, um, how the, Gro uh, the Cleveland, uh, administration wanted to placate the labor forces, but they didn't want to tie it intrinsically to May Day and Haymarket Affair. It is. It is a fat name drop, Google Ezra. Um, that is the straight up silver ogre. Thank, thank you for the follow, by the way. Um, close that. <clears throat> yeah. Um, usually if I'm doing a reading, um, shh, caboose, shh, you don't say it out loud. Um, if I'm doing a reading, most of the time, it's something I wrote. Um, yeah, I, I, for the most part, I'm an essayist. Um, but yeah. Um, well then I'll be unabashed about it. Um, a proper, uh, proper, uh, anarchistic lens of analysis critiques capitalism as well. Capitalism is a hierarchical order of operations that it op implements coercive and oppressive elements within a societal organization. And that means due to the meta ethical analysis that is conducted under anarchistic means that capitalism fails its justification for existence, just as the state does as well. And in fact, in the absence of a state, it would become the de facto state as well. In fact, around these parts, we call it neo feudalism because that's what it would default to. So, Scott's people, welcome, but know that we are highly critical of anybody that even claims under that title of ANCAP into up to and including stating that it is not a thing and that anarcho-capitalism is a bad faith inorganic misnomer intentionally created to provide political cover for those who don't want to own their shitty position. I love you, Scott. You're the only person that can actually hold ground under the, under the ANCAP banner. And I probably don't believe, uh, I don't believe that most of your people can. <laughs> um, I, for those that you brought, that Scott brought over, no, Scott and I are contentious on this, on this topic, but we respect each other. I respect Scott. I, I, I will be forever critical of his position, but we have wonderful conversations and Scott has spent entire streams on my air and we hang out afterwards and have chats. And we, we, but I think it's bullshit. <laughs> I think it's bullshit and I'll call it as I see it. But yeah, we got, I got nothing but love for Scott. Um,
No, the alternative are a variety of mechanisms up to and including communitarianism, methodologies for um, strapping them to the ground, such as syndicalism, which still operates under a capitalist modality. But here's the thing. I am an anarchist. I'm not an ANCOM. I'm not an ANSOCH. I'm not an ANSIN. Um, and I don't believe ANCAPs can be a thing, but... I'm um, not an ANCAP, most assuredly. I'm an anarchist. I am here to teach my community anarchistic order, uh, uh, orders of uh, operation, uh, anarchistic modalities of operation, right? I am here as an advocate for anarchism. Now, what you do with that anarchism beyond and above that is up to you. Um, anarchists don't believe in projects of projects, uh, project of projects. It is not a prefigurative uh, um, uh, uh, ideology. Basically, once I teach you how to be an anarchist, what you do with that anarchism, as long as you are abiding by those uh, uh, those ethical, uh, those metaethical and philosophical ideals, um, that's up to you. Because there's no way to, for me to prefigure your society, your community, your affinity group, your mutual aid group. That is that's authoritarian. So basically, my role is that of an educator. I'm here to teach you about anarchism. If you have economic questions, we can answer some of those. But the truth of the matter is, is that you need to consult an economist, such as Irish Swede, who is also in our community, um, who is is uh, an anarcho-syndicalist of his in his own right, um, but has multiple degrees in economics and finance, up to and including at present pursuing another degree, PhD level, um, in econ. Um, so, like, I would point you to expertise in those areas to consult and uh, and talk to them as far as constructing your economic system. I can point you to historical examples, such as the Anarchistic Republic of Kospaya that lasted for 375 years that utilized communitarianism as the foundational means for their economic structure. Um, so I can point you to real-world examples that existed. I can point you to expertise that exists that you can tap. And I can make suggestions unto my, uh, for myself. But at the end of the day, I'm an anarchist, first and foremost. I'm here to teach you how to organize yourselves, how to operate in a less coercive, less oppressive manner, how to achieve consensus. These are the things I teach my community. I hand you the tools. I, I get you the hammer, the screwdriver, the nails, the saw, Right, that's what I do. What you build with them, it's up to you. Because at the end of the day, individual autonomy is core and fundamental to what an anarchist does. And as long as you don't fuck with our communities, we don't fuck with yours. It's pretty much the good old fashioned New England slash anarchist way of operation. Don't fuck with me, we don't fuck with you. The Anprims, I hate, but they are actually anarchists. I wish I could see the same way that I have critiques of ANCAPs. I don't have those critiques of, of Anprims. Anprims are genocidal maniacs. They are horrible, horrible people. But they organize anarchistically. They are technically anarchists. So I can't critique them on the same on the same uh, primitivists, silver, primitivists. They do not believe in, in industrialization. They don't believe in agriculture even. They are unironically returned to monkey. Straight up. But they do organize themselves along anarchistic guidelines, which makes them consistent as le at least for anarchistic analysis, which means I have to accept them. Which is terrifying because, again, they're fucking nuts. Uh, no, in individual autonomy isn't contradictory with social consensus because the fact of the matter is that any individual autonomy is uh, is um, encapsulated within a human construct and you have to recognize as a human that there is no such thing as an island. That it doesn't exist. So while you have individual autonomy, you exist within a social fabric. And that social fabric, it is your responsibility to maintain and uh, to guide to some extent or another. It, very, are you going to, if you're willing to move to the middle of nowhere with nothing on your back whatsoever and build everything from scratch from the land using zero resources from this world and knowledge that you have accumulated from other people, 
along your way, then fine. You are an island and you can have full claim to individual autonomy with no social construct attached to it whatsoever. If you can't do that, then what you have to do is recognize that there is a mitigating factor within, the, uh, within that framework and that it is a balance that any, any anarchist recognizes that it is about maximizing individual freedoms to the point where it does not inflict or incur harm or in, uh, in, uh, encroach upon another person's individual freedoms. <clears throat> Keep my showers in there, but uh, thanks. Yeah, I'm 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 in that camp too, Puka. Oh. Ah, no worries. Thank. Um, thank you. It is, isn't it? Yeah, slobble you did it, uh, diddly. Thank you. Um, they alternate between pink and blue. I go, I go. the The toenails are done too. It's it's a mani pedi. Um, I alternate between pink and blue. Yeah. Um. Yeah, just an aside, anprims are super cringe and genocidal maniacs. Look, we can't return to monkey. People need insulin, so anprims and anti civs can go fuck themselves. Um, but without capitalism, we wouldn't have fidget spinners. I bet we have ancient fidget spinners that predate capitalism. Recreational. I, we guaranteed. Been smooth rock, exactly. Hey, we we had ancient uh, ancient spinner spin uh, uh, fidget spinners for sure. Um, you want to do all the tricks? Um, so so the new people know you can actually cue off the the side cam yourselves. Um, that is a, there's a command. It's a channel point redemption on the channel. Um, and while we're at it, you want to, you want to just do the, the, do the tricks, right? I hate life. Basically we're set up to fuck with chuts. We're, we're set up to fuck with Chuds. That's, um... Isn't that corrupt? The man, the myth, the legend, Neil Breen. If you don't know who Neil Breen is, then you should join us for a bad movie night on Fridays. Because he is a god amongst men. Um... You did more of a workout that I've done in six months. Need to work on that is that is Cappy, the channel mascot. He is an anarchist uh, capybara. If you aren't sure, capybaras are on our side, um, as evidenced by recently wealthy neighborhoods in Argentina being fucked with by capybaras. They are the most chill creatures on this planet. They can get along with just about anybody. They are fucking based as shit. And they are on our team as an anarchist. Um, and that's Cappy. Um, yep. So, Cappy is, uh, Cappy is the channel mascot. Uh, Neil Breen is our messiah. Um... Most of the redemptions say out of stock on my end. I wouldn't be surprised. People have been redeeming the shit out of some of them. Um, okay, so the cat ears are out of stock for sure. 
Um, that is that is a song made by a community member making fun of infrared if you don't know who infrared is god bless you It is me, Trey. Yes. Nonsense. It's me. Yeah, that is that is a tanky. Um, God bless you if you don't know what a tanky is. I, I We deal with them in a fair amount. Um, I know more about his entire political system than he does talk about infrared. Um, infrared political system. Women should swallow, not spit. If they spit, they go out of their way to be gross. Um, I've only heard rumors about him and wanted to keep it that way. I, um, I, I have interacted, um, um, early on in his streaming career. Um, he's batshit insane. He's bad shit insane. He's bad shit insane. He's he's also creepy as fuck. Honestly, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be alone in the room with him. I would not leave a woman alone in the room with him. He he's no, I mean for real. For real. Like the other week, like just last week, he was basically sexually harassing a fucking female streamer, like on stream. Like going hard at it. Yeah, the the guy's the guy's got some serious energy. I I would I'd be concerned. I'm, I'm serious. Like, I'm not memeing. I'm not fucking around. Like, anybody who's watched enough of in, uh, Infrared, of Has, his name is Has, um, knows. Like, the dude is a little unbalanced. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Slobble, fucking. There you go. In chat. No, Mitre. Yes, his name is Haz, H-A-Z. Yeah, nonsense. Um, just another beta who thinks he's an alpha. A Sigma alpha. Um, yeah, the moment that I, I, the moment that I watched him, um, yeah, he is a bit of a loose cannon, for sure. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. For proudly radical. Since I owe Kai a few favors from back in the old days. Uh, shit, I probably shouldn't talk about that. Wait, why are you still recording? Fine, fine. Just be sure to edit it out. Anyways, as I was saying, well, this is Alex Jones, and I just wanted to teach the proletariat a few things about anarchism. Anarchism isn't about chaos. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Anarchism is about the people. It's about solidarity and mutual aid. It's about removing unjust authority and hierarchies. We should all be anarchists. The world would be a better place. Now, I'm going to apologize again to all those parents whose lives I ruined because I'm such a douchebag. Jones, out! All right, guy, this has got to make us even for that uh, incident you helped me out with. Alex Jones, everybody. Um... Yeah, when when I saw Haz walking down the street in that video he posted of just ra talking to random people, literally just walking down the street. Nobody knows who the fuck he is. He's literally just walking down the street saying, I fucking, uh, I own Destiny three times. I fucking own Destiny three times. I fucking dunked on him. And people were just like, um, okay. 
It was so fucking cringe. It was the definition of cringe. It was like, oh my fucking god, dude. Like, for real. Get it together, man. Get it together. It was, it was, it was like, oh, okay. He doesn't, he can't separate reality from online spaces. He, he doesn't, I, I honestly, I don't think he can. I'm, I'm not, I'm not sold. <laughs> I sincerely think he thinks they're one and the same. <laughs> I own someone on the internet, everyone else. I can't pay my rent. <laughs> basically, basically it's, it's. Terminal online brain. Mm. Um, had an argument with a person on YouTube who denied that Caleb Malpin was an Osbell adjacent. <laughs> fucking Caleb Malpin. Um, yeah. Has fucking... He's got issues. Um, yeah. Timo worries me sometimes. The fact that he influences as many people as he does, it freaks me out. I, I, just, I just need to believe 95% of the people that go to his stream are there because it's a train wreck. It's a fucking train wreck. And how do you not how do you not turn and look at a train wreck, right? Everybody everybody rubbernecks a car accident. Right? Like, holy shit, look at this this fucked up crap. Right? Like I have to believe in my heart of hearts. 95% of his audience is just there to watch the shit show. Yeah, <laughs> Burger Burger King. Um Um, Hilda Beast, thank you for the follow. Um, yeah, it, it 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 is. It's a little concerning. Um, this, dude, he's he's making a decent buck too. He's got like fourteen hundred subs or something like that. Last time I checked. Um, yeah, I think he he was I think he was making something like fourteen hundred uh, subs a month. Yeah. No, not in a school, not as bowl. Um, nice though, silver. Um, yeah, it, it, it is. Um, it's a little freaky. It's a little freaky. That that sort of violent revisionist rhetoric is getting like that. Uh, pimping my old message about that trial court opinion because the terrorism thing is bonkers and I have to share should be in my chat history. Sorry to bring it up again. No, 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 Marcus. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Thank you for the biddies too, by the way, Marcus. What am I boss? Oh, wait, no. Where am I supposed to be looking, Marcus? I don't see like is it another day <gasps> oh there it is got it got it got it actually speaking of project I recently submitted my first trial court opinion for review once the judge gives it back tomorrow with edits it'll be officially filed also, apparently, terroristic threats are just a misdemeanor in my state. <laughs> Sounds about right, actually. Um, Doomer or full bloomer to pull uh, more people? Anarchism will save us kind of stuff. Um, I mean... <sighs> what I need to do, Karina is unfortunately I know what what would do it is fucking going on panel shows and getting combative because that's what draws people in is the blood sport it's the drama it's the drama of it all that fucking people are addicted to which is sad and pathetic but it is the thing it is the truth and we all know it so it's the shit show that is drama it's ridiculous Yeah, nonsense. You you would nonsense could perform on those shows. Dude, nonsense, you could clean up. Scott. 
I would be super happy. Yeah. Name drop me a couple, a couple few times. Like fucking throw me out as an educator. Uh, Scott, uh, I have been described as a pillar of the Twitch political community and an inspiration to other streamers. These are other streamers words. Okay. So I, I consider myself an anarchistic educator and others have described me as a pillar of the community and an inspiration. So fucking do it, man. I'd like th Thanks a million. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> uh, Puka, I'm see. That's the thing. Puka, I'm in that camp. I'm there with you, Puka. I'm there with you. Uh, I'm going to be honest about your absolutely best on mic arguments and conversations, but you don't hook talkers since you're not well known enough. Hmm. Um, well, I, I, Karina, I'm just, I'm, I don't like doing it. Um, geez. Oh, geez. Interesting. That's really fascinating. That's really fucking fascinating. Um, who linked this? Wait, who's whose post is this? Oh, this is radio, dude. Radio. This is fucking fascinating. This is in Germany. So they put this up for accidents. This is not your story, is what this says. According to him, yes, recreational. And I mean, he's, he is, I mean, there, some anarchists would consider him no, many would consider him yes. I would say, what does he say? And he says he is. Interesting. Um, yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know to what degree. I mean, it's Germany. It's fucking Germany. So, I mean, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, those sorts of things are not constitutional entities the same way we think of them in the United States. So, they're, they're, it could be 100% legal for the cops to just be like, fuck you, you don't get to know this. So, yeah, like that's... Uh, do I have the pamphlet? Dude, it's so fucking... Aka, take care of yourself. Um, have a good rest of your evening. <sighs> um, okay, cool. Um, here's, here's the long and short of it. Anarchism isn't about chaos. It doesn't mean there aren't rule sets. It doesn't mean there aren't societal norms. It doesn't mean that we don't have systems in place to regulate that sort of thing. It is a hierarchical organizational modality in which there is consensus decision making and communal operation, uh, operations. The fact of the matter is, is it's more, more akin to what you would see as direct democracy and grassroots, grassroots organizing. While what we would have is not akin to what you recognize as police, we do have safety mechanisms and groups in play that can respond to these sorts of things. Also, most anarchists believe highly in the right to self-defense and firearms ownership and training. So, the police, the ones who enforce your safety of your loved ones in your supposed hypothetical uh, community there, generally are minutes away when your wife or daughter or loved one is seconds away from either dying or being raped. 
right? So in your hypothetical situation there, they don't actually do that. So, yeah. Second, we believe in firearms ownership and training. We believe in self-defense training. We believe in responsible ownership and training, right? So we would be more uh, equipped to deal with that. Also, we believe in mutual... Um, Mutual aid and free association of affinity groups. That means your neighbors are likely to be in, on your side as well. So the first responders to an incident that would require safety and or training and or uh, safety and uh, safety and or medical uh, response would be your uh, uh, immediate affinity group. So we would eliminate the threat that is the mon monopolization on force that is the state we would eliminate the police that are the uh, uh the enforcers of the status quo of that oligarchical system and we would supplant it we would replace it with something that is far more uh, effect uh, 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 effective and far more um democratic so as far as I'm concerned, under an anarchistic system, my the safety uh, for my loved ones efficacious. It's dude, it's dude. I Scott, like the vocab slipping. I've been on for a bunch of hours and <clears throat> you can hear the voice. Um would um not only would the safety of my loved ones be improved under an anarchistic system, um the safety of people who I don't necessarily love, but love as in my fellow man would be improved as well. So there's my response. Uh, it can slobble. Um, anarchism is, there is no monolithic entity of anarchism. It's a network of ideas. And in the words of Emma Goldman, uh, Goldman, we much prefer it that way. Right? I can't speak. There are anarchist, uh, anarcho pacifists that believe under no circumstances should one engage in those sorts of activities. There are uh, uh, insurrectionary anarchists who believe that that is the only option. See, this is the thing. I am someone who can be fairly antisocial recluse. Hey, level. Uh, would these tendencies of mine be problematic in an anarchistic system? No, uh, in an anarchist system. No, level, because we can accommodate all of those sorts of factors. It's really not a big deal. Um, as long as you were engaged in some re regard. And given the electronic era that we live in, we could make engagement digital as well. Like, it's, What it does require is you to be informed. And it does require you to be partici uh, a participant in um, things like town hall meetings and those sorts of things, uh, which can be done digitally now. So, no, you can most assuredly do that. <laughs> Radio. Sorry. Um, except that's not true. Okay, cool. I can point you to examples of anarchistic societies, such as the Anarchistic Republic of Suspia, that, while admittedly a microcosmic example, lasted for 375 years. Um, so, and it managed to hold at bay the papal states. You know, the Roman Catholic Church, in all of its force and glory, for 375 years it held them off. So... Yeah. And fucking... Yeah, all the rest of that is straw man argument. And anarchists are historically and contemporarily... We've been there for the labor movement. We've been there for the suffragettes. We've been there for the Black Panthers. And we were there for Martin Luther King. We were there for uh, queer liberation. We were there for indigenous uh, liberation and uh, indigenous protests. So the idea that an anarchist community would end up being a fucking race purity or religious bullshit like that is contradicted to anarchist ideals. Straight up. We, it is a philosophical lens of analysis that it critiques coercive and oppressive elements within your society at its very core, such as racial purity and religion. The very essence of anarchism contradicts what you're putting forth as basically a straw man argument. 
but I'll take it down nonetheless. So, yeah. Uh, democracy. Well, okay, so it's also uh, uh, silver. Um, most anarchists advocate advocate for consensus decision making, which is the best. That's gold gold standard. Your platinum standard is consensus decision making, but approval voting through a democratic process is an acceptable secondary one. Uh, if you're not familiar with approval voting, feel free to look it up. Um. I can point you to a couple of good videos, too, if you need to. Um, thank you for the follow. Um, we got over to the commons. Pot the Black Mesa remake. <laughs> Boss. <laughs> um, Zippy, so close. What Zippy have? To Oh, Zippy. No, 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 no. Zippy. Somebody already said um, I looked like Tony Hawk. Somebody said that earlier. You've got bingo, Zippy. Sure it will. Recreational. Yeah. Chiran in Mexico. Um, yeah, Zapatistas in general use a bunch of anarchistic elements. They're not strictly anarchists. I mean, neither, you know... It, fucking but they use anarchistic modalities of operation for some of their organizing techniques so again that exists um private property isn't really a thing personal property is uh, most assuredly um, once you understand the distinction between private property and personal property private property needs to go away it's problematic um personal property anarchists have no critique of private property on the other hand yes we have many critiques of um that's fair marcus oh level i mean basically all of it i mean there's no real good place to start because we were woven in through the whole of it um Let me just check something. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I sort of... Mm. Um, give me one sec, level. Labor movements starting 1880 to 1920, sub-search anarchists. Um, give me one sec. South, that's Bohemia. Oh, there we go. Yeah, 
Okay, so here's where you start spiraling out. Level, I'm gonna give you, um, I'm gonna give you a link to an anarchist library document. Um, see the subsection, the dissemination and reception of anarchism from the 1880s to 1914 introduction. Um, there are a series of subsequent uh, sorted, uh, sorted, uh, sourced links within that document. Go to the sources and spiral out from there. Dmaz, hello. Um, now let me scroll back because I probably missed a bunch of stuff. Um, yeah, private property is the theft of public goods. Um, let's see. Oh, Jesus Christ, who the f yeah, he looks like he's about to do some shit. Uh, beast. <laughs> that motherfucker looks like he's gonna do some shit. Um. I'm working on a hierarchy of property rights essay right now. The, the supposed anarchist is working on a hierarchy. There you go, folks. Ancaps, not anarchists. Anyway. Um. My dog died today. Dimaz. That sucks. I'm sorry, man. That fucking blows. Um, that fucking blows. I, I, this is why I don't have pets anymore. Um, that's why I don't have pets anymore. I don't, I don't, I'm, mm, I'm not putting up with that shit anymore. Dude, that sucks. It sucks when you lose a pet. Are people discussing again if I may sell nuclear launch codes to the Taliban as it is a freedom of speech? <laughs> uh, I, I wonder so often how educators can repeat themselves without hurting themselves. Well, Otto, it's a thing. Yeah, I won't get another dog. No. Yeah, I, 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 I tapped out. When my last cat died, um, no, you're not, Scott. You're just an anti-statist. You're not an anarchist. Just because you don't like the state doesn't mean you're an anarchist. There's more to being an anarchist than being against the state. Um, and I've convinced more people that you're not an anarchist than you have convinced people that you are an anarchist. So I'm winning. Um, insert Charlie Sheen meme here. Um... <laughs> Hey, Scott, you're the one who teaches your people bad faith techniques openly. <laughs> I can play the game too, motherfucker. Uh, Silver, if anything has taught you that winning matters, it should have been neoliberal and neoliberalism because those motherfuckers are the winners, right? Like at the end of the day, Fucking Scott and I will infight like motherfuckers, and I will never actually consider him probably a, a true and proper anarchist. But I know if it comes down to some statist bullshit, he'll be standing next to me. Right? When it comes down to fucking cops doing the bidding of the oligarchical masters of our society, dude, we're allies. We're fucking brothers in arms in that shit. So, like, of course we're gonna infight theory. Of course, we're going to fucking throw shade. But the neolibs fucking won. And if you don't think that's the truth, then I don't know what world you're living in. Because we're all the losers. Those motherfuckers won. They won. So... Yeah, end of the day, that's the truth of the situation. Um, where was 
hang on. I ain't, oh geez. Yeah, that's going to be, okay. Right, we're going to do this by day, not, yeah, back up there. Um, Jesus Christ, really? Um, <sighs> I don't like Daddy telling me what to do. It's like a story. Am I an anarchist now? Yes, Wallada. That is 100% how it works. 100%. Um, yeah, we're doing it. We're fucking doing it. I, w I wanted to do this for him. I so wanted to do this for him. Being, there's more to this world than being right and wrong, Silver. Sometimes having a house, having a roof, having food, these are the things that matter. Seriously, there's like 78 people in here right, right now and 55 are ready to raid. What is wrong with some people? There's 23 fuckers. 23. Ah, uh, how dare. How dare. Dare. Um, it's been a long stream though. I did it. I did a reading, and my voice is kind of shot anyway. So, um, we are raiding into a non-political streamer. So I will warn you right now. I will tell him to outright ban anybody who fucks around in his channel. Right? Just chill. Political discussions get left at the door. We're leaving them behind. He's a fucking chill dude. He's good people. Relax. Just deep breath. Everybody else, have a good night. I'll have hope you're as well as you can be. And fucking, I'll see you tomorrow for the 11:30 stream. Catch you all later. Um, Scott, thanks for the raid and uh, some of Scott's people. You don't know, come on back. I'll teach you more about uh, anarchism. Later.